a sacrifice induced for the altar of your vanity. A jealous, hungry God craving praises of profanity. With bedroom dark and dine and a deep mouth stained with wine, it drinks. It's filled. It was your mother's, not your brother's, that agreed to feed you poison. This egregious lack of choice indeed seemed fit to join your voice in. With lies disguised as prizes of reason and wisdom, with briberies of finery to weaken any criticism. Can the fly invade the blossom that devours it? A mouth that lies in wait for a gift of life to shower it. Okay, um, well, welcome back. We are on session 80. <laughs> How about that? Um, if I remember correctly, uh, we've still got a whole bunch of stuff going on. Um, in the mortal world, Gaius Gracchus is going on trial for banning his post. Um, that's, as you know, a very big deal. Um, Albina, your sire is still all over you with wanting a werewolf captive. Um, Hatchipset, you have a personal goal. Hmm? Sorry, what? Yeah, it said you have a personal goal. Ah, uh, Yes. Uh, a as a group, the three of you with money, um, are essentially your resources are under attack. Uh, Oppius Virginius uh, Paetus, uh, has in fact figured out who is doing your banking for the most part and has, uh, been attempting to apply pressure to them. Uh, so far, without success, but it's only a matter of time. <laughs> and our goal was to put the pressure back on him, I guess, by contacting with a certain person. I do not remember. You had to get the immortal authority to on that someone is fucking the banking system. Yeah. And I think we were going to some temple to do that, right? Well, no, you are going, you have figured out, and in fact, he flat out told you that he's working for Crethius. He. Yes, and to find and talk to Crethius, um, you have to take a bull to the Temple of Mars to be sacrificed. And then they will give you back an answer about where and when you can meet Crethius. Doing the sacrifice must be a male. So that would be um, pretty much just the evidence of Valad. Sorry, I can repeat that all we know? The sacrifice would have to be a male, so that would be either Nicodemus or Vlad. Ah, speaking of mm -hmm. Vlad, make your roll, please. Yes, is this a different night? Yes, this is a new night. I figure you guys are probably going to go ahead and spend uh, spend quite a bit of money, which uh, bulls are not cheap. Yeah, true. Uh, let's see. Oh, there's my sheet right here. So, uh, just just to be clear, just to, to you know check it twice. Cretius is not the person putting the pressure on us. Someone okay. else working well, for Cretius is doing that. Correct. And there's there's okay. basically two ways to stop this. You can go to the person putting pressure on you, and yeah, maybe you beat him, maybe you don't. Maybe you convince him to lay off. And then Cretius gets somebody else to do it. Or you can go to Cretius and basically go to the source and be like, dude, you need to knock the shit off. Um, so, also, Chris, one more thing. Uh, 
fuck, when am I going to get 9 or 10? Okay, I do kids. Uh, wait, can I can I choose how I look like? I would like to look like a Karen. Like a perfect Karen you would imagine in your mind. God damn it. A perfect... I rolled a 6. A perfect what? A Karen. A Karen. Ha <laughs> Roman Karen. Okay. Yeah, I, I will... I yeah. would like you to make your... Make a... Uh, wits and body craft roll because you're doing this to yourself and you don't need to make physical you don't need to physically sculpt it you're literally doing this with your mind so make okay. a wits and body craft roll take into account okay. your merits right to make uh... your bones move and your flesh reshape and somebody's going to have to give him some advice somebody's going to have to tell yeah. him when he's close because he can't tell <laughs> that's true. <laughs> that's true. I cannot tell. Um, okay, I'm going to roll with uh, flesh crafting then. Mirror on, Ellen. Uh, also, one more thing. I would like to use my herd and feed a little bit. Okay, so uh, what a herd does is herd, um, when you want to use it, provides you with an automatic success on your hunting roll for each dot of herd that you want to use. Uh-huh. So I can still fuck up, though. So I can still get attacked by other kinders, that means. Or or not. I don't know. Well, I, well, I will do the witch roll first, and then we will yeah. see. Um, where is it? Oh, I here. Be I, I believe that's what her does. So while, while you're making that roll, let me check. But this is initiative, man. It might man. die rather than... Um... Uh, let's see, wits and then bodycraft. Bodycraft, yes. Which I cannot choose. I'm going to choose some other skill with the same dot. Well, it should be crafting or craft bodycraft. Uh, I'm going to roll occult because it has the same rating. Um, and He's then I throw a crest to be clear. Mm -hmm. Uh, no, no, no. Difficulty is going to be four, I believe, because normal difficulty should be six. Here. I'm not sure. They mentor herd. Your okay. herd rating adds uh, adds dice to your rolls for hunting. That's what it does. Oh, it adds dice. Okay. That's what well, your herd rating uh, because, does. Because okay, because of my charmed existent luck, I ignore one nature one. So and I I'm pretty sure you success. have uh, specialty in body crafts, right? So. Uh, I mean, I, I body craft is a specialty, have... so... Yeah, true. So there's four success. Yeah, uh, that should be plenty, okay. as long as somebody is giving you good advice. So you want to look like a male Karen or a female Karen? Uh, I I remember what the Ventrue said about uh, gender, so I want to appear as a male Karen. Okay, so... And then the hunting role. If you guys... Uh, know what um, Crassius looks like eventually. He kind of looks like a younger version of Crassius. <laughs> because Crassius was very much a, uh, uh, a Chad. A male Karen. <laughs> now that we did our daily humor... <laughs> Can roll right. the hunting. Yes. Uh, hunting is going to be okay. Uh, I need to roll stealth either case, right? No matter my approach, I need to do a stealth roll. Well, the the thing was, you didn't know it because they were new, but you uh, were hunting on somebody else's domain that they were claiming. So okay, can I hunt in my own domain? Yes, you can. Okay, I would like to hunt in my own do own domain. Okay, go for uh, it. Okay, uh, so let's roll. Uh, I forget that it's an option to hunt in your own domain. Yeah, I'll, um, tell, you, I'll tell you what, what's your herd rating? Uh, it's four. Four. You don't even have to roll. You have plenty. Okay. You can get 60 you blood so. without hurting anybody. Uh, if, you, if you say so, I won't. Yeah, don't roll. Yeah. You're good. You fill back up to full. You are fine. Okay. Okay. Um, 
So yeah, I, I just want to appear as a killer. Uh, okay. Which I do. All right, uh, Nicodemus. Um, you uh, come to your awareness. You wake up. Uh, you still stay at the um, old training grounds, correct? Yes. Right, okay. Um, about 15 or 20 minutes after sunset, uh, there's a light commotion at your front door. And one of the servants comes up and says, uh, um, Master, there is uh, something weird. Uh, two men just uh, walk by and they set, and he presents to you what they set down. It's a jug of water uh, and some uh, green vines. He said, uh, they set it down, and when I attempted to inquire what they were doing, they basically ignored me and left. Uh, I tried to get in their names, anything from them that I could, and they just kind of stared at me and turned around and walked away. That must be rude. Mm. Have you recorded how they look like? Uh, they look like foreigners, travelers. Mm. I've never seen them before. Uh, from... Foreigners from... Oh, I have no idea, sir. Um, uh, yeah, I can just tell they're Roman. Or... Mm, I see. So, jug of water and vines? Yes, green vines. Um, Does so it seem th like, like anything that rings a bell in Nicodemus's mind? Uh, nothing that shows a threat. This is just at Nicodemus's place, right? Correct. So while you are mauling over that, trying to, like, okay, um, I don't know why these two guys would put water and, and vines at my front door, but... Um... They're, pl they're playing the really long game of hoping they'll overgrow your, your yard. All right. You get the chance to, as a group, meet up um, as you normally do, and uh, talk over your upcoming plan. Uh, <clears throat> before, before we, before we, you know, talk about uh, some stuff, I just want to say, declare that <clears throat> I'll be now before you. Uh, before you go on with and proceed with your plan to capture a lupine, I would like you to uh, tell me some time before death, maybe one two night before death, and if you can provide me humans, subjects, I am more than willing to fleshcraft them in a manner that will be helpful to you guys in the combat. I do not care how you acquire these subjects, be it be slaves from the market you buy or people you abduct, as long as they are uh, fed with any of your blood to survive, essentially, uh, what would be uh, huge damage to a normal human, I uh, can fix them for you. Okay. And they... So keep that in mind. Don't forget it. If, if you need some shield or a little manpower, a little minions, I can provide them. Interesting. Could I be able to acquire uh, slaves with my resource currently under attack, or that? to kind of freeze the resources. Um, you can acquire them. 
uh, what you're going to find out in about a week is that they will not refill. So basically, you don't get a paycheck. I see. So, uh, that said, uh, I do think there is more immediate danger ahead of us and actual uh, proceedings that we decided on. We need the ball, bull, the white one. Uh, between the money all of us has, I think we can acquire one such animal. Yes, the uh, Forum Brarium uh, is where they bring animals for slaughter, and they someone I'm there would, I'm sure, be more than willing to sell you a bull. And then we shall just, you know, safely travel, take the bull, take it to the temple, do our ritualistic contact that is required by the kindred in question and then we can try to persuade him or trade with him make some affairs to get rid of this annoying pressure on us what say you first of all we should find out why he's doing this mm -hmm. I, do. I do i do think we we were thinking about like after you know doing the bull thing we could speak to him and ask him some questions and learn how the motivations maybe he has let's, let's see if he is even involved that's true i mean he that's may true. be mithras's child but that's not to say that he's actually involved in any way with the cult itself but and if that's the case he may even be able to help us um, I, I mean, help will not come free, but in case he does not really know about this thing, and indeed will be okay with helping us in an exchange of boons or something else, then I do think it would be a, a good option. It will be at least a safe option with costs, but safe nonetheless. Less bloodshed. Yeah, less bloodshed is better in my preferences. In this case, at least. In this case. So to the market then. Yeah, together. Not uh, splitting the party. Yeah, so you uh, head down to the Forum Brarium. It is quite dark outside, of course. Forum Brarium um, is just to the north uh, west of the Palatine Hill. And it's in that valley between uh, the Palatine Hill and the Tiber River. Okay. Uh, it's quite noisy. Uh, animals are being driven in uh, into the corrals and, and gates, into the warehouses. Uh, the scent of animal blood is everywhere. Uh, rotting carcasses. You can see wagons heaped with uh, hides being uh, taken out of the forum and to the uh, tanning district, to the tanners in Rome. Uh, people are already beginning to bargain for uh, animals, so, uh, the best cuts of meat, uh, the fat. Uh, some of the entrails are being gathered up. Uh, you could swear you saw one of the Malkavians walking around and uh, bargaining for a, a big old bag of uh, viscera. Uh, I do, before we proceed to haggle with anyone, I do ask the group uh, who is the best at haggling. 
uh, because we will need to haggle and uh, we are kind of tight on resources so it's better if we can get the most out of our social skills to make the least uh, outcome I know next to nothing about animals Neither do I character I suppose the question is who has the highest commerce yeah I think that's what we need commerce or oh, can we in this case can we roll animal uh, animal can to hego is that a possible option no but Chris? uh dominate would be a possibility uh, we can take it as a we can take it as a last option when there is uh, simpler ways dominate and presence would be possibilities to get lower prices why do i feel like you're pushing us to, no, no, to, to be honest um, if you guys really were like looking for a bull for breeding, animal ken would be important. You're not. You okay. want a bull for sacrifice. Hmm. Uh, so who got the highest commerce then? Um, isn't a sacrifice a thing in, in the priesthood? So I guess they could tell which uh, which uh, bull is a good for sacrifice or which isn't. Well, if you take one that's obviously sick, like the ribs are showing and its eyes are glazed over, yeah, they're gonna be mad at you. Um, but you don't have to take the pri the the blue ribbon prize bull from the county fair. <clears throat> Yeah, we don't have to take a bull so good that uh, Queen Maeve would uh, storm the land for it. Yeah, you, you don't have to take the father of the Minotaur with you. Yeah. Let's, let's take a normal, healthy, white uh, bull. It doesn't have to be and white. That, that, that's going to be, that'd be hard to find. Just so a bull. It doesn't, okay, it just needs to be a bull. Okay, my mistake. Uh, and then let's uh, let the one with the highest commerce do the haggling. And if really things goes well, then I guess one of you can use presence or dominate to get what we want. But you know, be careful with what you say or what you do because you might, well, fuck up something quite easy to do. We'll keep that as a backup. Yeah. Okay, so you spend some time walking the yards, uh, looking in the pens. Uh, there's a couple of people out here with bulls. Um, you can see the bulls. Uh, Unknowingly getting it on for the last time in their lives with a couple of female cows and uh, uh, You just you kind of pick out the one you want looks decently healthy Okay And the uh, owner is standing there. He's he's already talking with the uh, one of the slaughterhouse people uh, Beginning to bargain for some of the meat. He's got two cows and a bull to sell uh, okay, who got the ice commerce? I'm asking again. I got zero. Me? You? Zero. Nicodemus, it is then. No, I said no. No, okay. Does, okay, here's the important question. Does anyone here have more than one dot in com- have even a single dot in commerce? I think Gregorius mm. does. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm not sure if we can have the luxury of having Gregorius with us when okay. resources under attack all the time. But if, if it's possible, yeah, I'm okay. yeah. Let's go with Gregorius making the haggle. All right, uh, Nicodemus, that uh, puts Gregorius mm -hmm. up in the spotlight. This uh, lanky doctor-looking dude who uh, uh, the farmer looks at him with like. You look a little too delicate to handle one of these bulls. <laughs> that's why we're here. And this when <laughs> Gregorius' friends is the man. I'm kidding. I'm joking. All right. And behind nice. Him, okay. That's, all right. So that's yeah, okay. you walk up, and the owner looks at you, and he's like, "Well, you know." Uh, I was going to get a denarii a pound for this thing. Uh, hmm. 
Oof. Maybe maybe Gregorius can say, you know, if you come to my uh, place, I can give you a free checkup yeah. and but take care. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to cut you a deal. Uh, if you take this uh, bull off my hands, uh, this guy was going to pay me uh, a sweet 50 denarii for it. Uh, I'll give it to you for 60. That way I know it's going to a good home and not to be slaughtered. Um, it, it's not that I care, but can I make an insight check just to roll uh, empathy? Um, just, just to ex, uh, just to see his uh, body language and you know. Okay, you don't have to empathy. He's bullshitting. But Gregorius uh, appears to be buying into it. Gregorius, roll again. Uh, just to be sure, because I rolled intelligence plus commerce, this might not have been uh, the correct choice uh, of attributes. Manipulation. Okay. Manipulation, commerce. Yeah. Oh, okay. Hey, yeah, okay. You offer a, a little weak. I don't know, that's kind of expensive. He's like, okay, look. I'll tell you what. If you're uh, going to be sacrificing it, I'll, I'll drop it down to 40. Okay, 40 denarii. It's going to the gods. It's a good cause after all. <laughs> um, uh, I'll let you all run one last time. I have zero in real life heckling skills. So I, I'm like okay with this, you know. In real life, if I, I, <laughs> I have none. He raises it up to 100. If if I was if, if I was there as myself, I would be like, okay, sure, take take the money. <laughs> I believe you. Oh, maybe Ooh. Not. And maybe not. Who knows? Ah, oh, nice. Okay, you argue him down to a more reasonable. Uh, you're still getting ripped off here. Uh, let's be fair about this. Um, you're still overpaying, but you argue him down to a more reasonable thirty silver denarii. And uh, all between Albina and Nicodemus, and well, between all of you guys, really, uh, you uh, easily have enough to pay for this, and you walk away with it. Nice. Um, just to make sure, uh, I would like to. I would like to. No, I'm not going to do that yet. Now, if the bull tries to run away from us, does I'm anybody gonna... have inoffensive to animals? I have. Okay. Uh, I have animalism right. discipline. That is does not uh, doesn't really help you here. Um, I got animal cat. You guys lean it. You guys lead it up, and the bull immediately begins snorting, pawing, uh, pulling like, "No, get me away from uh, these monstrous uh, things." Uh, so does one person with it not count as enough then? Well, uh, it won't get close to any of the rest. Only hatchets it because she has inoffensive to animals. Gotcha. Okay, well, let's Keep make the. Uh, let's yeah. Let's let's uh, head trip should stay behind or front of us and take little distance between us and himself, herself. There you go. That's a good solution. You're like, okay, well, we'll we'll walk at a little bit of a distance here. Obviously, this animal doesn't like us. Yeah, there's nothing supernatural about us here. No, no, no. It just doesn't like us. <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah, but then, then we go to the temple. All right. I wasn't say for the benefit of anyone else looking on, the feeling's mutual. <laughs> <laughs> we don't like bulls meat. <laughs> oh, yes, that's right. You did have a bad encounter with them at one point. A long time ago. <laughs> everything, Wait, circles, <laughs> everything circles back. Wait, did we? I forgot. Uh, yeah. uh, the nameless village in uh, Greece that you guys essentially depopulated. Oh. Oh, right. right. Was it the village had ships that embraced the child? Yes. <laughs> yes, that one. Yeah. Vietnam flashbacks for head ships. That... So. All right. Yeah, you guys walk it on out of there. Uh, you head to the Temple of Mars. Okay. 
the uh, abider- proprietor. There, the there is no. By the way, there's no 24-hour class of priests. Okay, only rich people are priests, and they pretty much only work during the day. They do have a somebody there to watch the temple at night. Literally, just there to make sure they don't get robbed. As a, a young guy, maybe 16, 17. Mm-hmm. And he's like, uh, kid kind of rubbing sleep out of his eyes, trying to stay awake. Well, uh, uh can I, uh, you guys here to, to deliver a sacrifice? Uh, what's going on here? That's correct. We're here to deliver a sacrifice. Okay. <laughs> I just, I just whisper. Uh, to Nicodemus, was there any specific thing we had to say or like a password? Do I remember any such thing? Chris? There was yeah. a specific thing you had to say. Yes, with a dedication to Sol Metros. Oh, okay. Uh, I will make sure to tell uh, the master when he comes in. Uh, in the morning, and uh, he will sacrifice it in the correct way. In the morning? Ooh, interesting. Yes. He takes the bull uh, and he ties it up pretty securely to a uh, to a post. So it stays outside for a night? Yeah. Okay. So, it's, sure, so, we... so, it, so it doesn't matter that you may be stolen or something? I mean, if somebody no, comes it's... looking for it, they're going to come looking for it. <laughs> but no one's going to come looking for it. Yeah, exactly. Hopefully, yeah. Hopefully at least. Um, <clears throat> as we as we get out from the temple, uh, do I see any uh, stray dog or cat? Now, there's certainly rats and stuff running around. There's uh, but there's seagulls. Um, see, God, this is not true about him. Cats, well, cats are pretty stealthy, man. They, they, when they're out hunting, they don't necessarily like to be seen. Mm-hmm. So, uh, we'll do a random roll here. If it's a, uh, I give you, a, if it, if it's over fifty percent, sure, you see one. Yes, there is a tomcat yowling down an alley. The yowling uh, catches your 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 ears, and you see it. Uh, 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 through the, through I the trash. I I would like to summon that cat to me. Okay. Um, no uh, roll needed. It just you exert your will, Ugh. and the you, cat cat uh, sees you and begins slinking over to you. It obviously is not happy doing this, but it, it can't help mm-hmm. itself. Okay. I'm going to uh. Like, uh, kneel, I should say. I should I kneel and then lean towards the cat's uh, ears or head. Uh, not get too close, like, you know, creepy too close for the cat, I mean. Um, just like a owner, uh, cat owner will do to pet their cat or something like that. Uh-huh. So, uh, and then I'm going to use animal, uh, animalism, animalism one. Okay. Uh, to speak with the cat and I'm going to... And I'm going to speak gently with human language, not a cat language. I'm going to say, order it actually. Uh, just stay here till next night. Like stay in this area, close here. Not get too far away. That's my order. That's it. I, so okay. Yeah. You want, exert your so willpower on the uh, stray cat. And it uh, acknowledges you, basically, as being superior predator. Of course, cats don't give a shit. So it's a good thing you have supernatural power to back this up. Mm-hmm. All right. The instructions told you to come back in two nights' time. Oh, okay. Okay. So we wait two nights then. Yep. Well, while we're waiting, we might as well look and try and think of something else to do. I'd like to try to 
got a, had a, a the homeless and uh, took that into Vlad's uh, farm to have the uh, gold Disney creations. Okay. Um, what's your game plan? She's going to look around for a uh, that seems to be relatively isolated, and she's going to. As she appears to be offering them a donation or something like that, some charity, she's going to dominate them into heading to the location of uh, Vlad's farm or following her to Vlad's farm. Okay. Uh, actually, uh, just out of character, I want to say that you don't need to send them to Vlad's farm. You can actually send it to the Kotri place. It will be a better thing. Yeah. It will be faster. <laughs> yeah. So um, send them to the Kotri place. That seems like uh, something the group would have to agree to. Oh, yeah. That's true. And. Would the group, would the group agree to that? Might possibly compromise. I think our place is compromised already. I'm, I'm willing to tolerate it. Plus, you will got to see some flesh crafting in action. It's not every day you see that happen. What about Nicodemus and La Biena? Yeah, I was gonna say, you know, La Biena would be intrigued to a degree. What's the plan precisely? Flesh crafting. Uh, for the flesh crafting, uh, well, I'm going to make them uh, bodybuilder monstrosities with uh, bone claws and quills and monstrous, essentially, in all manners, for you to use with fighting the werewolves. So it's definitely not going to be humane. Alteration. Mm. Okay, um, okay. Albana, just uh, yeah, anyway. you have many choices to choose from. Uh, they all appear to be fairly average. Uh, you're skipping any families and stuff. You're trying to target loners, right? So people yeah. sleeping alone in little crooks and uh, in doorways and um, anywhere they can get a space to lay down and sleep, really, where they might not be bothered. People who won't be missed. So uh, just give me a single, uh, give me a single dominate roll, please. Difficulty is going to be three. No way. Well, uh, you don't have a charmed existence, don't you? That's <laughs> fail, though. Yeah. So, <laughs> I'm going to tell you something out of character. Not, this is not me speaking as a storyteller. This is me speaking as a, fellow, as a fellow person here. I would never let somebody do flesh crafting in my group haven. Especially one where I have a herd that lives above it. Do you think that's going to be quiet or palatable to their existence? That is a, a fair point, actually. I had not considered the haven, the herd part. I'm concerned about the idea that uh, people coming to the haven, you know, not coming out, or at least not coming out as they first went in, might attract attention to it from mortal authorities. Okay, so uh, Albany, uh, give me another dominate roll. Same difficulty. Dude, it's not the fuck. It's not a botch. It's just, just not your night. Just everyone's just like, I'm too tired. Go away. And they roll over and go back to sleep. Just leave oh. me alone. Why don't you please leave me alone? Ah, uh, uh, you can do it one more time. One last time. Come on, you got this. one last time. You got this. <laughs> Another proper botch. There you go. There we go. All right. Success. In it. Three um, people, uh, guys, uh, their physical stats are 2-2-2. Two, two, two. two strength, okay. two dex, two stamina. Uh, are given dominate instructions to go to Vlad's farm 
uh, tomorrow and wait. Okay. Uh, sure. Uh, once they come, I will start my flesh crafting process. Of course, as they come to my base, abduct them with the help of my ghoul and uh, flesh crafted well, warriors. They're going to come in the morning. Assume. They're going to come during okay. the day. And okay. I'm sure you people know to give them some food and water and basically trap them in a room and don't let them out. Yeah, pretty much, pretty much. Um, uh, and then I'm going to start, yeah, the process. So that'll be tomorrow of night for you. Them. Yep. All right. Anything else you would like to get done really quick before we move forward with uh, some flesh crafting? Um, I, I guess do some research about the meaning behind the jar of water and green vibe. Yeah. Asking uh, um, hot chips at first. And then, if not, just trying to look in the libraries or ask around. All right, um, Hatchips it. Intelligence and theology. I was going to say, uh, out of character. It's nothing to do with, well, as I say, it's probably still too early on for thaumaturgy, isn't it? It is. Um, also, La Viena, you might actually have some insight on this as well. So add a dice to your dice pool. Um, what diff? Uh, six. There we go. You have never heard of this, ever. Uh, but you can draw some conclusions. You taste the water. The water tastes like clear, like a clear spring. It's, uh, if you still drank water, it would be cool and refreshing. Um, there's some artwork on the jar uh, that you've never seen before. Uh, it looks like strange creatures with um, long ears and harps of some kind, some sort of musical instrument like a lute. And uh, the vines are vines that nobody, none of you have ever seen before. But it appears to be an offering of some kind. Interesting. Is it a curse? It's an offering of some kind. Okay. So it must be positive. We can only hope. It's certainly not a threat. Is this uh, something about fertility? We, this is stuff that you guys have never seen. You've never seen the ivy? It's completely foreign to you, which should tell you something. Especially the guys with hearth, uh, hearth, uh, hearth wisdom biology or botany and herbalism. And the artwork is of a origin completely unknown to you. Okay. Maybe this is not something important and we are just over, you know, taking yep. it over seriously. <laughs> This was left at Nicodemus's place, right? Correct. Mm. Specifically, and... it was left at the door to the house. And the house is used for health so... uh, care. Mm, not exactly. Now, would, would any of us have had access to it at any point, or not? No, literally just Nicodemus, and he was like, Hey, this is weird. Somebody left it at my door. <laughs> I just mean, I, I, you know, that'd be an Some... early opportunity if she'd use Spirit's Touch. Oh, that is a great idea. Um, go ahead and make the roll for me. That is a fantastic see. idea. Someone has a crush on Nicodemus, maybe. She got a stalker, Warpo. It is perception plus empathy. Um, we're going to make this... Um, difficulty 8 to get a useful impression. Let's see. 
Is that a poison ivy? No. Ow. Man, the ones are flying fast and heavy tonight. We God. okay. I'm I'm thinking we should definitely not fight the werewolf tonight. Okay. Yeah, we should do it next session. Labiana, you, you want to re-roll? Sure, you can go right ahead. And you said you're going to spend a willpower, oh. so. Hold on, yeah. hold on. Oh. Let, let me try it because Nicodemus has uh, that as well. Excellent. What, what, what's what's the roll again? First, it is you know, perception yeah, plus empathy at difficulty eight to get a useful impression off of this. Yeah, Labiana, you got a seven. There is a... For Labiana, there's a hint of music um, and water. You smell green. Uh, Nicodemus, with one success. Um, you hear a foreign language that is co not just foreign, it is completely unknown to you. Uh, very, you, very basic information. The last owner's gender and hair color, for instance. The last owner was a salubri. Okay. Through spirit's touch, you have felt that the last owner of this was another salubri. Ooh. Interesting. Nicodemus side quest starts. Well, it seems like it's yours now. Um, I don't suppose there is anything uh, specific now that we know. Now that he knows it's related to Salubri, nothing in his knowledge. Nope. Nothing and nothing about this says salubri. So does it seem like the language has any specific patterns that can be discerned <laughs> or any similarities can be drawn? No. It is so far removed from your anything you've ever heard before. Um it is completely new in every sense of the word to you. And again, it's a, a hint, an impression, a, a, a slight voice talking. And then you see, you don't get a chance to see the face, but you see three eyes in the triangle pattern. And the vision fades, and you know that the last person who owned this was a salubri with three eyes. Or someone with a, with a very, very coincidental birth yeah, defect. Yeah, yeah, no, three eyes, salubri. <laughs> <laughs> this, this is not a Zemisi playing a prank. It's a salubri. <laughs> no, 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 yeah, this is not Vlad. Okay? No, that would, that would, that would be funny. <laughs> I, I definitely did not uh, private message Chris to do this. I promise. I did not. All right. So. Convenient. Unless you guys have something else that's super pressing, we're going to fast forward a single night. <clears throat> Vlad, you come awake. Roll a d10 for me. A five. You shake off the dirt that you sleep in. Uh pad naked to your uh, waiting servants who shake all of the dirt and, and stuff off of you to put back in your grave earth. And you get a chance to explore your body a little bit. What you can see. Gender may change. What you can see. I'm in a new shell. Um... You have breasts. Uh, they are different sizes. 
Uh, one appears to have uh, the breasts have belonged to a mother has given birth to six children. It's all flat and floppy. The other one is a full teenager. Uh, your legs are quite hairy. Um, your genitalia is somewhere in between. Okay, I don't know how to imagine that. And when you feel your face, um, your teeth are kind of buck toothed. Your jaw shape has changed uh, to something that is like the jaw, the struts, the, the jaw is. Uh, larger than your, your upper face so it kind of sticks out a lot mm -hmm. um, so you're going to need to you you just look like a really ugly human at the moment um, so you're going to have to fix yourself if you want to be somewhat presentable for company possibly also a D&D &D null uh, but in simple terms am I a a mess great breed? No. Well, I can make myself presentable, but I don't want to do it at the moment. I might do it a little later on. Uh, like before leaving the house farm, but all right. After well, you're going to be spending all night, all night flesh crafting. So. Okay. Well, then. All right. Then you walk into the matter. room, and there's the three guys that uh, Albana dominated are in there, and right. uh, and. They haven't been fed, or, or they have, they have not been fed or watered all day. They've been trapped in the room. Uh, it's bare of furnishings. They're thirsty. They're tired of yelling. Their voices are all hoarse. And you walk in, and they take one look at you, and they're like, "Why are you doing this to us? You gotta let us out of here. We didn't do anything to you. Let us out." And uh, um, so, uh, yeah, set the scene it, for me. Set the yeah, scene. Right. So I will say, considering what I'm going to do, I think Vlad has done this several times, so he knows the proceeding, that these people has to be in some short way in, uh, what's the word for it, in, was it incapacitated? No, it's not incapacitated, immobilized, yes. Uh, these people need to be immobilized because they will surely try to run away or resist. And it will get things, you know, more complicated and maybe messy. So knowing this beforehand, I will say that Vlad is prepared and he has his outside room at the moment, but right near the door. He has his, uh, you know, flesh crafted monstrosities and his ghoul, uh, guarding ghoul, ready. And what he's essentially going to do is just uh, giving a hand gesture so that all of these servants rush inside and in, uh, immobilize these three humans so that they won't, they won't resist Vlad okay. or so try to beat your, him. Your chittering monsters rush in. Uh, yes, Master, let us serve you. We want to serve you. Yes, let us please. We, we will take care of it for you. Yes, sir. And just like babble, babble, babble. And the yeah. three, the three men, give... of course, scream in fear like... Oh my god! Oh my god! Get that away from us! And they're like backing away from the wall. Oh my god! The gods, gods of, 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 of the earth! Oh, please help us, Jupiter! Juno! Oh my god! Oh. Yeah, they, they just... yeah, they're they're just like screaming out for help, and there's nothing they can do against these monstrosities as they come rushing in, and they beat them about the head, grab their arms, uh yank their arms up behind their back and tie their arms together, put it in a noose around their neck so that their arms are tied to their neck. And mm. uh, kick their legs out from under them so they're all, like, f you know, flopping about on the ground. And, uh, they, Master, do you want us to hog tie them? Do you want us to tie their feet? Uh, I, I tell them that, uh, so I will assume that I have these special tables, like torture tables right. with, uh, what is it? With uh, metal bars, you put your arms and legs in. So, okay. that the so they does bring not... the they bring these X shaped, upright, wooden uh, frameworks in, and set them up, and then they yeah. grab these guys and they bind them, so they're spread eagled. They of course strip the clothes off of them. Yeah, pretty much, pretty much. And uh, uh... they are tied with uh, rope and rawhide. And no matter how much these men struggle, they can't get free. There's no way they can get free. Yeah. 
Now, uh, can I ask something? Uh, because this is a very fluff thing and trivial thing, can I ask if my ghoul, my guardian ghouls, know how to play a uh, instrument? I'm just thinking about Vlad doing his experiments while his ghoul plays a song, like in the background. Yeah, no, they have no idea. <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh, I was just wondering. Out there. Well, I'm yeah. So I will, I will, I will not take too much time out of the sessions. I will just say that I proceed to create what would be called a bone clause, so that they get you know strength plus one lethal damage uh, with their un uh, unarmed attacks, hand attacks, as like claw attacks essentially. And I will also flesh craft their bones so that they have bone quills. And this is actually something from the book. Uh, they describe the mechanics of the quills, and I've wrote it in my handout. You can check it. Uh, you can check the book also if you want. Uh, but essentially, what I'm going to do is quills, flesh crafted clothes, and I would like to. Um, I would like to essentially. Oh, I made a mistake here. Uh, move the stamina. So they have a two, two, two. You said in p physical stats, right? Right. I would like to take uh, one attribute from dexterity and one attribute from stamina and just apply them to strength. So I want to increase their strength by two. Um, okay, that's going to take if... more time than what you have for all three oh. subjects. But you okay, can definitely do the so... bone work. Um, okay. All right, so you uh, take the time, you part their flesh, you grab the bone, you twist it with through your, between your fingers like you're trying to thread a, a, a twist a piece of um, twine uh, or tighten on a on a, a piece of paper or something. You know, make it into a little tube, and you you pull these little quills out of their forearms and uh, of their ribs and, and chest through their pec muscles, pectorals. Uh, All right. You grab their hands and you draw the bone through their hands and. Of course, they're screaming. Their screaming is just pure music to you. I mean, what what is what is playing yeah. on a freaking flute or something compared to the terrified screams of somebody undergoing the metamorphosis that you can provide? Pretty much, pretty much. And uh, one more thing, I actually would like to do that after giving each of them one blood point, so that they, you know, survive this process. Right. Yeah, just at some point during the torture, basically, um, you grab a, a wine skin and you have a blood point put in it and you put the top on it and you jam it in their mouth and you just squeeze, drink it, drink it! And they, of course, will suck down any fluid at this point because they're incredibly thirsty. Mm -hmm. um, may I ask what's the brawl rating? Zero. Zero, okay, zero brawl. It's okay. Uh, it will be meat shield essentially, in this case then. Um, so, he, here's the question. Last question, now that they are done, they are altered. Uh, what would be the safest way to transport them to wherever we want them to be transported at? I assume it will be just, you know, one of those uh, carriages with, you know, closed, uh, confined, closed, confined well, space. you basically just got to put them in a wagon and throw a, throw a tarp over them. Mm-hmm. And roll them up there. Okay, okay. And then um, I will say that Vlad will discuss this beforehand, before doing all of this torture the other night, and ask the group where where they want these people, these monsters, to be transported. Like, where should I leave them? Group Haven? Some other location? Probably some other location. Okay, yeah. sure. Because, yeah. as far as thing goes, Vlad has zero idea where these people. Uh, he's not going to keep them in the group, uh, sorry, in the farm, because, you know, that doesn't help you guys. So where do you guys want these people to be? Does anyone have a domain? I can drop these people. I imagine we might be able to ask if, um, in fact, let me just check the name. Uh, 
Alexia may allow, allow them to be stashed in her domain until it's time to go hunt the werewolf. I have to ask yeah, her about you, it. You've been in the Temple of Diana. There's no place to put them. Oh, okay. So there is no underground area or anything like that. Okay. Nope. Um, well, I cannot keep them in the farm because when we go, when you guys go for the werewolves, it's going to take some time to transport these people from the farm to the about about forty five minutes. Might. It's gonna take about forty five yeah, minutes. Gonna, yeah, it's yeah. definitely going to be later than the fight, so I need them you know, in the city. Just forty five minutes, not much. You just transport them the night of the fight. The night we are prepared to ambush the werewolves. Okay, if you say so, then I will. I will say that uh, one of you, uh, one of you stays the night before the ambush happens. Stays in my farm, and then they will take the monsters with them. All right. Um, the night that you are um, flesh crafting these poor unfortunate men. Uh, and. Nicodemus, in your haven, uh, you wake up that evening, and one of your servants uh, comes to you and says, uh, Master, there is a uh, man who arrived this afternoon from Corinth to speak with you. He bears the seal of the tyrant Evarchus. Is he alone? Does yes, he have any he's alone. Weapons? He is alone, and he we uh, he bore weapons, but they are currently uh, in storage. Very well. Show him in. Um, they show him in. He is quite dusty uh, from the trip. Uh, he was allowed to clean his face and hands and feet, of course, but uh, he has not changed out of his travel clothes. Uh, he stands up straight, clicks his heels down, says uh, uh, Nicodemus of uh, Parthia and Rome. I am here on behalf of Tyrant Evarchus of Clan Ventru. I bear a message for you. Mm, be welcome to my house. Um, very well, what is the message? Uh, he reaches in his bag and he pulls out a uh, rolled uh, envelope with a seal, and the seal is the seal of your sire. And he holds it out to you. Nicodemus will take it. And, and he, he kind of looks at the seal, but doesn't open it. And he rests his eyes upon the man. Is, do I require, is the response expected? No, sir. I am instructed to leave this with you and return home. Very well. I thank you for relaying this message. He turns around and uh, leaves immediately. If you look in the handouts section, and it says Nicodemus handouts, and the top one under that says message from his sire. That's what you need to be looking at. Mm -hmm. Okay, I guess Nicodemus will lock himself up for a while and analyze the letter. Look for any hidden messages and cryptic words. Well, it says exactly what it says. <clears throat> All right. It has been two nights. It is time to go pick up the location of the uh, requested meeting. Okay. Well... Alright, another five. 
Ain't getting nine and ten. <laughs> All right. Um, you look like a bearded old man. Yeah, that's, that's everything's yeah. droopy. Back's just a little bent. Uh, you like a uh, old man who's labored his whole life. Seems legit. Okay, you guys are back at the Haven. No escape. Um, did you receive any uh, any replies on the sacrifice? You need to go pick it up. You need to go pick up your answer. Oh. Yep, they said wait two they said wait two nights and then come get your answer. Now let's go so, get the answer then. Yes. Might be a good idea for only males to also go and uh, the females members of the group waiting the back. Alright. Um you go back to the Temple of Mars. The young man that is just sort of sitting there watching everything. Uh, it is the same same boy that uh, you were there the first time. Uh, sees you come in. Um, says, uh, uh, give me a moment. And he runs and he gets a um, clay jar that's been sealed. And he says, this was left for you. And he hands it over to you. It... Uh, it's pretty small. Ooh. It's uh, about the size of a small ball. So, and it's got a little something in it. Kind of, kind of. You hear a little something kind of ch -ch 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 on the inside if you shake it. It's not heavy. Okay. Well, let's go to somewhere private and open it. Mm -hmm. Some private corner of the temple. Okay. Yeah, hey, you guys. It? You guys head off to a to a region. You uh, crack the clay seal on the outside. You open it, and it's a piece of paper, and it says, "Go to the tenth district on the third night of the week, which is tonight. Arrive two hours after sunset. Do not be early or late. Do not send agents ahead." That leaves you about an hour. Man. Okay, well, let's try to make sure we are at the time, exact time then. Mm -hmm. yeah. do, you, uh, do you know the distance there? It would just be something that would be able to make it, or this be something you need to run to get there? Um, you can walk there in time, or have some, or pay some people to carry you through the streets. If you go from uh, here, it's going to take you about 45 minutes to walk. And we got one hour. Okay, I think, I'm, I don't know, I think walking is fine, but if you guys, if you guys want to take the, the car, I will say car, sorry, but if you guys want to take a car, yeah, sure, we can do it as well. If there's enough, if there's enough time, Nicodemus would like to examine the note in greater detail to see if there's any um, additional message, perhaps you spirit touch on it out of curiosity. No, it is, uh, it's literally just a note. Okay. Okay. Uh, so do we, are we walking or taking a car? Taxi. Uh, inverted commas, car. Yeah, cool. <laughs> no, um, I'm, I'm happy to walk. How about you guys? Yeah, I'm fine too. I don't think we are going to get pushed by any yeah. kindred or anything. I mean, we can still get ambushed while inside a car. So. No, you're in a pretty, uh, pretty good sized group. Nobody's going to uh, ambush you. So. Yeah. Let's walk. It's not important. We, we see. I mean, if if you guys are okay, go with that. Yeah. I mean, I'm down for walking. Not the point in 
uh, risking wasting money, especially now that we find ourselves uh, having attacked in our resources. True. Hopefully, that might be the end of the thing today, tonight. We shall see. Okay. Alright, so you guys, uh, you remember what Cretheus looks like, right? Um, black hair, much. that, uh, a little bit wavy, a little, little cur curly, hangs down to his shoulders. Um, strong, angular face. Uh, if you go to NPCs, you can find him. NPC, Eternal Senate, Mithras and Clients, and there's Cretheus. Yes. Mithras Client. We got some juicy lips, I should say. Yeah. <laughs> Big lips. Yep. He has a, he has a strongly of Greek heritage. I was going to say very Greek looking. <laughs> yeah. All right. You head to the tenth district. You are there just a couple minutes early. It's a it's a man made cavern. You are it's a street level. Um, alleyway. But the uh, buildings on either side are six stories tall. They are apartment complexes. And they are built up for the first couple stories and they begin to begin to be expanded towards each other. So the opening gets narrower and narrower and at the very top you can see a very super thin band of stars in the sky. Somebody could easily just step across the gap between the two buildings. It's dark. Very, very dark. It smells. It smells bad. Human waste, animal waste. You can hear the scurrying of, of little creatures. There's a couple of people laying down on the ground. Um, your arrival appears to have disturbed them. They're kind of looking at you with suspicion. Um, the only source of light is a pathetically small fire uh, halfway uh, down this man-made cavern. It's, in fact, it's, it's hard to judge distances. Could be halfway, could be a third, could be almost all the way at the end. You don't know. Especially more so for me. Yeah. There's a couple of a uh, couple of statues. It's a it's a shrine of some kind. There's a couple of statues there, and uh, uh, the only sounds really are people and there's a steady drip of some fluid coming down the walls. What an interesting place to meet. This feels, I should say, ominous. Ominous. Yes. I might have butchered the word. Why would I want to, to meet in a place like this? I don't mean. I suppose it would be a place you'd least likely see eventually. Yeah, this, this might be a case. Of you know, be where you are least expected kind of thing, or maybe we are going to meet a manager, or... I don't know, there might be so many reasons. My suggestion is that we just uh, stay packed uh, close to each other and be cautious otherwise. Oh, well, except the one problem with that, Kretius will only speak to men. I like this my and I think, they... I think so. Cretius will speak only to men. Does it mean the um, Cretius only attaches importance to men? Oh, right, yeah. What's that? What was what does that mean? It means to him the word of a woman is almost worthless. Okay. He won't, he doesn't refuse to speak to them. That would be rude. Mm -hmm. How about women with status? There's a. Uh, I'm just kind of trying to gauge if he kind of. Uh, well, status is something he is forced by tradition to respect. But you need to declare it, I believe. No, he knows she has status. She's literally just never chosen to exert it. <laughs> so, um, I think. I think our most social people in this group is Alpina and I think Headship Suit. I think she. 
He's not bitter at subterfuge. And Nicodemus, I it. think, should take and the lead in this. Yeah. Because he has both the advantages. Yeah. Does Nicodemus have a status as well? Nope. I am. <laughs> yeah, I mean, can the status of Vienna help us? Like, help uh, Nicodemus? Uh, he knows who we are. He does know who you are. Okay. Well, either case, I think we, I think our intention is not to assert dominance or whatever in this social aspect. We are more trying to come in terms, in positive terms with him and try to find this sweet spot of his servant lifting up the pressure on us and probably will ask something in an exchange. And we will just try to get the most positive outcome, least, you know, uh, harmful outcome out of this. So I do not think our intention is to lie or manipulate or, or intimidate. So let's take a friendly face and act friendly. All right, so who all is approaching him? Who's going down the alley? Nicodemus is, apparently. Um, I... Oh, go on. I, I think the plan is that we all go, but yeah. only Demos and uh, Vlad speak. And it might be a good idea to also show some sign of uh, subordination from us to as Nicodemus and Vlad show them as the leaders of the group somehow might also lend their weight, their words more weight with someone like creatures. Yeah, maybe, maybe I, I, I suppose, well, the thing is that uh, I'm not sure if this kind of uh, tricks are really needed uh, because uh, hmm. To be honest, I'm not sure how much he is familiar with us, but uh, I don't think this sort of place is required. I think all it's needed is that uh, only the two of us address it and the rest of you stay quiet. Yeah, pretty much. <clears throat> I think we all should approach nonetheless, but we, we just stay quiet and <clears throat> Nicodemus tries to end the situation. And if he gets, you know, in some tight position and doesn't know how to respond, then maybe someone else can. Uh, help Nicodemus by taking the control of the, you know, uh, speech. I think I can agree with that. Yeah. So let's let's go down the, the hall. Oh, want the sorry. Let's so go. The conversation going well. You uh, head down the alley. It's uh, definitely feels oppressive. Feels like the walls are closing in on you. Uh, I feel like this is. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. I just want to say. Uh, I just want to say. I think this is a case of probably outnumber him. He just wants us to be in a tight spot so he can get away easily and not as uh, not have to deal with all of us at the same time. If we try to approach, you know, combat. Uh... You get about halfway down. And you turn and look, and the people who remain behind are, they look pathetically small from here. And Cretheus is sitting down as you approach, and he stands up, and you, you realize that he is close to the small fire, um, and there is a shrine, a street shrine, so it's like a little pillar, and there's a small sculpture of a, a man sacrificing a bull, and off to one side is a covered heap of something. It looks to be a little bit cleaner than the rest of the trash mounds and uh, various refuge debris strewn through the alleyway. What does it seem to be? By clean, you mean that it was recently brought, right? Correct. So, uh, Crethia stands, he turns to look at you. Well, and he says, uh, okay. says, yeah, you, uh, You arrived rather sooner than I expected. Uh, I had thought it was going to take at least another month of uh, another month of prodding to get you here. Uh, 
Good evening. Okay, I see. I see. Uh, I see you've taken a, a, some means of effort to call us here. I want to inquire why uh, why such means were necessary instead of a simple message. But I understand the matter is important. If you understood everything, you would know that. I would not uh, I would not consider asking you to join me. This is about one thing. You will join or you will be rendered impotent and powerless forever. I wanted you to know. I wanted you to feel that this is not a choice. No, let me rephrase. It's a choice. It's a choice between thriving and uh, becoming powerless in, in Rome to those who do, to those who will serve. I'm changing the server here, guys. At the at the request of Vlad, how's that? No, yes. we are fine. We won't go until we we play uh, we play for a while. Okay. So, so did you hear everything I said? Hopefully. Okay, out of character. I just want to quickly ask what he's telling us that he wants us to join his cult. Yeah, he basically just told you, you either accept service uh, to me and my sire, or the attacks will continue until you are completely ruined. Well, I think that pretty much answers that question. <laughs> Out of character, of course. <laughs> okay, okay, we got the motivation. Uh... Mm. I will. I will add. We'll look at Nicodemus and listen to what his response will be. Hmm. I appreciate putting this matter so plainly. Now, mm. seems to be a very sure footing of where we are standing. Um. Pray tell my uh, curiosity. Do you extend this offer to many a kindred? I extend this offer only to canines that are worthy of attention. Ah, that's cute. What kind of attention are we? That includes uh, Ihamus, I presume. Ihamus. <laughs> Ihamus had the arrogance to reject it out of hand. And I assume a swift, uh, a swift punishment will fo will follow for this. All in all in time. While this is going on, Lavina is going to do a little something here. She is going to quietly activate read the soul, see if she can determine kind of a state he's in. Okay. I definitely think that's a wise decision. Mm -hmm. yeah. Perception plus empathy at difficulty eight. Got that there. I believe I will also spend a willpower on this. Don't do that near often enough. You probably should not do it often either. As it happens, uh, Nicodemus would like to use the sense cycle ability on him. Okay. So, 
your set cycle, uh, first off, says he is not going to get hostile with you. So you are not going to be attacked here unless you guys start it, number one. Mm -hmm. All right. So La Viena, read the soul. He's a vampire. Congratulations, you knew that already. Um, he is also quite calm. But he believes his propaganda. Okay. Well, he's calm. With two successes, you, you read that he's a vampire and his primary color is calm. He, he believes he has all the cards. Yeah, that's a... I, I would say that's a fair assessment. Okay. Valerian, sense cycle, two successes. All right, you may glean omens and visions of the person. You may ask two questions. I guess the psychological weakness is... Uh, psychological weakness. Um, you see a vision of Mithras in a temple of some kind. It, it is... Uh, a figure similar to us on the shrine uh, is in this temple. And you see um, Cretheus bowed before him, genuflecting, which, as you know as a Greek, Greeks never do. <laughs> um, so Greek, Greeks yeah. don't bow to anyone. So the fact that he is not just bowing, he is on his knees before uh, Mithras speaks volumes of what is going on here. So failing his sire or something within those lines. Which doesn't really help us, I think, in this moment. And what would your second question be? Can you think of something more immediate? Um, it can be answered to more immediate problem. So he seems to be quite sure of himself. Is it, is it possible to ask like his current fear kind of thing? What is he currently fearing? Or maybe does he... is there... Um, can it be uh, hmm, something along the lines of uh, has... Uh, has the issue of Ihamos somehow been a, a problem for him? Or is that too specific? Uh, so, basically, his interaction with Ihamos. Mm -hmm. And you, again, pluck the strings of, of fate and time. And you, a uh, vision comes floating back to you. He is arguing with other members of the uh, Eternal Senate. Uh, about what, you don't know. You just know it's about Ihamus. And by all appearances, he has lost this argument. Um, on his way out, uh, he meets with someone, it's not quite clear who, and begins to have a conversation about the next steps of dealing with the, the follower. Hmm. Okay, so he's not as decisively strong as he tries to put himself in front of us. 
so we don't need to feel threatened totally I mean, we should feel threatened still but not like feel you know we can't do anything against him whether he is confident or not his patron is one that can bring hell down upon us if we push too hard well, that's, that's that's true that's true but it's also a question does his patron really care that much about us to bring hell on us? If it's too hard to have his investments in the city, most definitely. Mm. Uh, I will. If Vlad will whisper to Nicodemus' ear, and he will say, uh, Could you ask? What shall be the benefits if we join his cult? What does he offer? What, ro what role does uh, does does uh, your master's plan have for us? Is it? Unquestionable subservience, or is there any actual... You will serve under me. But you will acknowledge my sire as a supreme authority that he is. Does it entail any particular activity right now, or will it just be left to our own devices and called upon whenever our services are required? Yes. I think you about have it covered. I will, I will whisper again to Nicodemus' ear and say, uh, are we, you know, are we permitted to do our own things while our services is not required from Mitras. I will tell Nicodemus to ask that. I see there's... Hmm. Do you expect the answer from us right now, or can we have a moment to rethink our position? Take all the time you need. He gestures back towards the alley, which has remained clear. Um, Rome lies at your feet. Excellent. Go ahead. Um, this is an out of character question. From what few interactions we've like, I think we've like come across Mithras in person like once or twice, like literally been in the same room level. Well, he also um, approached us and asked us to yeah. do something for him. Um, what what can we remember about his, him and how he operated generally? Mithras scared Artemis. Can you repeat? Said uh, Artemis was scared of Mithras. Mm. Artemis believed that. You know how we've talked about how Artemis bought into her own line of bullshit. Yes. Yeah. So has Mithras, but he can back it up. Bullshit. Mithras mm. has bigger bullshit. Apparently. Um. The oh, here's another question. Um. Are there any rules? Um. That has the prince imposed any rules on dealings with not other supernatural creatures? <laughs> Silence of the blood. Don't go spreading that you're vampires. Mm, but beyond that, but beyond that, um, no, that's pretty much that. it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. He's got he's got bigger fish to fry.
Well, since you've uh, asked if you need more, if you have more time, he assumes the conversation is winding to its natural conclusion. Yeah. Uh, I mean, is there is there anything uh, we want to ask before we leave the conversation? The question is, what did he take if, if we yes? So what did you say, Dalvina? Would he take offense if we had to speak and that's Nicodemus to speak for us? Like, we tell Nicodemus what we like for him to speak and... Um, he hasn't been taking offense to it so far. He's uh, been watching you guys whisper back and forth and use Nicodemus as your spokesman. Or if he is offended, he hasn't shown it. Yes. But uh... Nicodemus hasn't sensed it. <laughs> Um, okay, I've got that. I want a quick um, vote of opinions from everyone else. What do you think it would be? It would be worth just throwing in to the conversation a casual reference to his um, apparent allies among the um, Asirans and Horus and Ra groups, because I'm thinking. I'm thinking, depending on how he reacts, we can make use of that. Because in particular, if he shows signs of being completely un having no idea what we're talking about, well, I agree. Yeah, I think. yeah let's let's uh, casually mention that and then see how he reacts. You know, inside chicken. I'm going to assume you had this conversation in character. You guys retreated to the mouth of the alley. You huddled around each other, put your arms on each other's mm. shoulders, had a quick had a quick huddle conversation. Okay, next strategy. Let's go talk. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I was I was more just asking out of character because, if possible, if you know, if it because it's possible that Hat might actually inter might actually speak up um, herself at this point. If I may, what of your what of your allies or apparent allies from my own homeland? And I want to carefully study how he reacts to this. Does he any sign of emotion um, in his response? Um, disdain. He looks at you and he goes. You may ask such questions and expect an answer when you have joined in service to my sire. It's been asked such a question came from Nicodemus and you have decided on servitude to meet her. But, um... But um, is there an empathy check that can be made to see if he actually understood what I was referring to? Not really. Um, you, you, I mean, really, it's a geographic region. You're going to have to be a little more specific if you're trying to trick him out of a reaction. Mm, fair enough. Oh, I, I, I apologize. It's just that I'm rather... I'm rather bemused that uh, you'd you'd think um, you could easily get uh, myself and Ihamas on board when you have some of our what, some of our greatest enemies that are connected to you. Rest assured that uh, when you swear the sacred oaths to Mithras. His enemies become your enemies. His allies become your allies. Oh, and that's another thing, actually. I thought this was soul, uh, soul Mithras. Um, no room for a god beyond him. Would not, would not Ra, Horus, and Osiris interfere with that? In time. All will bow down and acknowledge his superiority. Okay, now have I have I gone far enough to try and get judge his reaction? Um, 
He is uh, amused. Interesting. And I think Nicodemus could probably give you some more insight why he's amused. Ooh, do you think Nicodemus? What the hell? You don't have to roll anything. All right, you already asked about his psychological weakness. Uh, it's it's because he's a fanatic, and it's just em empty empty tools, uh, and he's not afraid of any any uh, any opposition. He truly believes Mithras is a god. Mm. At this point, uh, Labiana dares to speak up. And. What if we decline? Well, I respect your decision, and I respect that you in particular have been granted respect by our first citizen. That will not stop what is coming. You will be rendered powerless and impotent and unable to threaten anything I'm doing. Within the laws of our citizen, within the laws of Rome, of course. Um, Lot will speak after head and after him, you know, ends his thing. And I will just ask, <clears throat> in case we join your cult, will I still be able to study my uh, art? unhindered so long as you provide Mithros with what he requires and provide me with what I require I have no reason to stop you how is so once this once uh, once uh, once Mithras sees this control of Rome because I assume that is the that is the goal here. How will how will it change under his rule? <laughs> oh, you. No, I must stop myself. I can't say it. Uncle. Your minds, your minds cannot comprehend I the goals of my sire. I wish to understand this because I see Rome as corrupt in many ways. Perhaps. The city needs a change, needs a, an alteration to set it on a new golden path. What path is this? What use does a god have with a mere city? Uh, it's not a mere city. A god it's is it's nothing... A, mm, sorry. It's a, it's a beacon. It can be a temple. It is, it is right now one of the greatest centers of... of... Uh, um, centers of uh, of uh, of humans and of kindred, a perfect means to control them. Well, a god is nothing without worshippers. Indeed. If there is one thing that you should all know by now. Cities come and go. You were at Carthage. Except for you, um, young Vlad. Uh, I know you missed that. Oh, how you would have loved it. But, there are things that are eternal. Cities are not among them. Yes, my sire has plans. He requires certain things to happen. To be first citizen is not among them. And that is the only answer you will get. I know you're going to be required to do away with your own code that you have been fostering. I'll be required to limit it. Your own cult will be no threat to my sires and I believe you will find it useful in the future 
It is part of what has made you so successful here. Why would I want to take away your tool? Can we be expected to be granted a reward for our service? Your reward is service. In all other areas, it is a fairly standard patron-client relationship. Not too different from what we had previously with uh, mysteries and Artemis. No, not too different. Um, you get you get my protection on the Eternal Senate. You get the protection of all of my clients. You get the protection of all of my Cyrus clients. Um, are we going to be known that we work for you? It would hardly be worthwhile to work for me otherwise. That's, that's how being a client works. Why would somebody avoid you if they don't know who your patron is? This is our opportunity we should take. I... I do... I do feel like considering what is asked of us is simply providing our services when it is required, but otherwise all, uh, not being hindered of what we personally want to do. I do feel like this might be a good opportunity as well, an endeavor. And from what I understand, what you're telling us that we won't just be providing services. We will get benefits as well. That is how the patron-client relationship works. If I want slaves, I can send somebody down to the market to buy them. That's what Dominate is for. Of course. Mm. I personally don't have problems with joining the Cult of Mitras, but this is a group decision, so maybe we should take a time. Uh, I must admit to finding it interesting how you you speak of how we cannot comprehend Mithras's aims, and you know what? That is probably true. Mithras is far older and more powerful than any of us are here. Yet, you seem awfully confident in tangling with things, with things on his level already. Do you even know what you're, what you've, even incidentally stepped into? Is this Never in my life have I heard a statement more arrogant than to put, than that you have put yourself on the level of my tire. <laughs> oh, no, no, Never. no. You, mi you misunderstand me. You misunderstand me. Not myself. I'm talking about your own apparent allies that you so casually dismissed. Why don't you explain it to me in great detail? Hold on a second, I need to look up something real quick to get make sure I get dates right. Uh, in the meantime, I would like to ask him, uh, does cult of Mitras do not care the origins of a kindred or human as long as that creature is part of the cult? You are not uh, allowed to know the answer to that question until you join. So I need to join to the cult to know if there is any discrimination. Why should we share our secrets with outsiders? Of course, of course. 
No, I, I was just curious. You are, you have a point there. I'm not going to try to push you. Now, I believe the what? rest of you have a decision to make. While Hatshepsut and I have a in-depth conversation about what she sees as the history and possible shortcomings of my allies, I am greatly interested in this. Oh, not necessarily so much shortcomings as, well, I will simply lay it out. Your sire, your, your god, claims the mantle of the sun. You are, if not knowingly, then, then unknowingly, which would be even more worrying for you, connected to the forces of other gods who would claim the mantle of the sun, who have existed for thousands of years. Were you at all aware of this? You question my knowledge? Yes. He leans forward. Now you have his interest. Let's talk about this. And he begins giving a dissertation on the Ptolemaic history of the uh, of how they have currently set up themselves as Pharaoh. Mm -hmm. Which I personally can't do, but <laughs> he begins express talking about them lineage by lineage, generation by generation, uh, back to where they took over. Now, did I, and it, when he finishes, he says, now, did I miss anything? Um, so, just to be clear, was he going through all the known dynasties of Egypt, or just the Tol Ptolemies? He, he started with the current one, and he began working his way back um, until the start of the Ptolemies. He goes, now, I know I've only, I've only gotten to there, but do you doubt that I study such things? Oh, I should, I suppose, re I suppose I should give my statement better clarity. I don't doubt that you know the mortal history, but, well, at this point, Hat is going to, off the cuff, um, probably lay out one of the more, one of the less um, closely, a story from the from the Setites that is perhaps not con considered as closely guarded, you know. The kind of thing that you don't go out in public saying, but you, you know, it isn't for only four members. You right, know what I mean? Right, yeah. And and then add some add some element details from that that would only be known to at least beginning satites and see if he is surprised by any of it. All right, so we're going to do a contested um, perception and awareness versus manipulation and subterfuge role. Uh, poker face, basically. All right. Um, am I allowed to spend a willpower? Uh, let's not. Let's okay. neither one of us do that. Oh, and... Um... Which is which for the dice balls? Um, he's rolling manipulation and subterfuge for a poker face. Face diff? Um, six. Base. Yeah, contested six. <laughs> wow. Well... Um, you read the little tiny ticks in his face, and theology is not his main knowledge, believe it or not. He didn't botch, but he did fail. So, 
yeah, uh, theology is uh, not his forte. You did get him there. Making note of that, that will... However, hmm? we're, I'm going to draw a line here. You hit him with some theological knowledge. When your talk begins verging into more occultic stuff, as uh, like who worships who and like their cults and stuff, he hmm. is much more knowledgeable. Interesting. So when you start talking about the finer points of this festival to Ra and what they sacrifice and, you know, stuff like that. He's like, yeah, I have no idea. But you start talking about who this priest was and when he lived and the rituals around that particular cult. He's much more knowledgeable. So he has very high occult knowledge. He has very low theology. theology. So yeah, he's never going to win a doctrinal argument with Hatchipson. <laughs> and Hatchipson, great job just figuring that out. You just realized that. Uh, um, At least when it comes to Egyptian history and mythology. Mm -hmm. I suppose, uh, I suppose we will need to consider this further, but before we depart for the night, I just want to, you, you're free to take it or leave it as you wish, but my comment as someone who, again, I fully admit, you are more powerful than me, your sire is definitely more powerful than me. Um, my sole bit of advice would be to take care you know precisely what you're connected with before you throw your weight around. Because while you may find success, so other forces may choose to undermine your glory. And now he has to roll self-control. Oh boy. Because you just insulted the fuck out of him. Oh yeah. Well, you know what? You know what? If we survive, that already means he's got a blow to his dignitas. Well, congratulations. Now if we die, we're going to be on the... Oh, hey. no, it's a fail. It's not it's a, a fail. I'm going to reroll it one higher and spend a willpower. <clears throat> Oh, he only has like okay. three self control. Two successes, and I'm going to roll uh, his manipulation subterfuge at difficulty eight. This is not contested to uh, hide the fact that he had to bite his tongue quite hard um, not to get into an insult fight with you. <laughs> um, well, if you join this cut, let's try to not make our bosses angry at us. So, okay. But the Fortunately, time, this time he had a pretty good poker face. And he mm. sat there and looked, and he goes, He was like, Yes, I, I believe you should uh, go and discuss this amongst yourselves. In the meantime, uh, I will say to the group, the rest of the group, I do think we should join in the cult of Mitras. What they provide does not sound so different from what anyone else would provide. Sure, they might be a cult, but Mitras is powerful, and so is his, and so is his cult. Um, there might be things we need to do for them, but they do not limit our personal goals and desires. And as long as no one prevents me from doing my arts, my scholar scholarship, then I do not have a problem with uh, being under them, more right. so if they provide benefits. Like uh, all of you guys roll perception plus alertness sight-based. 
sight base. Yep. Okay. The difficulty is going to be seven because of the low, the low light conditions. Okay, so difficulty nine for me. Aspects uh, uh, assist and any of that. Um, mm -hmm. if you're going to use aspects. It, would it be safe to use aspects? Yeah. It is not safe to use aspects unless you choose to focus only on sight. Right, the smell. The smell and the sound of wagons and um, drifting across several streets and everything else, yeah. You say perception awareness? Alertness. Alertness. Alertness, seven, okay. Yeah, this seven. Because of the... No, seven. Yeah. Mm. Well, that's still plenty of successes. Yeah, that's still the same. Uh, no, uh... There's still three successes. Uh, yeah, yeah. It, it's like, no, no, it's, it's four. You said seven, so... Yeah. Oh, yeah, you have a... Uh, the the sight merit, yeah. The merit. Mm -hmm. uh, perception. So, uh, if you're using aspects, as you guys are standing there talking to each other, and you choose to focus on sight, everything else slows down around you. Your hearing begins to shut off. You see people moving their lips, but you can't hear what they're saying. You know their smells, but you can't smell anymore. Um, you just kind of lose all awareness of everything else that's going on around you. Focusing everything on your sight. And you see um, the figure of Cretheus. He stands up, he grabs the package, and he is walking away. Okay. Uh, I do... Okay. Uh, as, as we just see, going so uh, I think we should quickly, if we want, quickly decide if we want to join the cult. And while we have the chance, we can tell him now. Um, we got all the time we want. Oh, yeah, he's going to keep the we're pressure. Not, we, we're not discarding the opportunity. Just also, um, ha, well, first off, Hat is going to indicate to, um, he's going to try and subtly indicate to Nicodemus and Labiana what, um, not Labiana and Almina what's going on. Basically, with an implication of, if you if you think it's a good idea to tail him, now's your chance. Um, okay, and, okay, well, but I do think he will keep, but beyond that, um, sorry, I just want to make this clear from the outset, I just want to make this clear early on, um, and we'll just note, while given the circumstances, I will not hold it against the rest of you if you choose to join, I cannot, uh, do so. See you there, sure. The opportunity mentioned by Hatch so Alvin is going to try to step out of sight and go into the shadows. Okay. I assume you're going to shadow form? Yep. Okay. You can uh, do so quite easily. You have done it many, many, many times. Uh, you become shadow. Let's see. Let's see. Okay. Super sneaker. Yes, yeah, super sneaker against the wind crew. Who shall win? Ding ding ding. To be trying to uh, trail uh, creatures when he makes his way out. Alright, so he is walking in the opposite direction of you guys. He's not going to pass you. All right. Um, so, uh -huh. Albana, you are floating along in shadow form. You cannot, unfortunately. This is very slow. You can't move very fast. And he turns the corner, and you lose sight of him. And 15 or 20 seconds later, you reach that corner, and you turn it, and he's gone. There's uh, people. It's not a huge crowd, but it is a crowd of people uh, moving about, going about their business. Uh, wagons and such on their way to the uh, markets. And uh, he is not to be seen anywhere. Okay, yeah, they, obfuscate. Uh, and I imagine that with the people walking around, it would be too hard to try to locate his tracks. Yeah, it's you're not going to be able to track him by his uh, footprints. Shit. Okay. Uh, well, let's obfuscate for you. Not obfuscate. Not Literally, it's just you didn't. <laughs> you have to stick really close. She's going to be returned to their group. 
returning back into her normal form. The disappointed look on her face. She says that she lost she lost him in the crowd. Yeah. Oh well, oh, it, was, it was worth the attempt. Yeah, it was worth the shot. Don't worry too much about it. But, so <clears throat> let's go let's go to our haven and proceed to discuss in our haven. Oh, in your haven, I suppose. Okay, as you guys are walking back, you cross cross one of the forums, and there are uh, people uh, chanting and shouting outside some of the homes. Um, you have crossed into one of the rich uh, areas, and uh, there's people uh, mar- basically pacing in a, your standard protester circle, uh, shouting and hollering and uh, chanting about uh, becoming citizenship rights. Citizenship rights! We deserve to be able to vote! You won't be able to sleep! No rest for you until we can vote! Well, that's lame. You can completely ignore it if you want, obviously. Um, I will make a mental note of it as something to keep an eye on, you know, a, a development that might be important later, but otherwise, time to head home. Yeah, yeah. Pretty much it doesn't seem like there's any reaction to these demands from anyone. No, the, uh, there's a pair of uh, personal guards stationed outside the home, um, and as long as the people don't get violent... Oh yeah, actually... Oh, sorry. Mm-hmm. There is one thing, actually. Can we tell who Foma is? It is uh, some senators. Okay. Um, is there anyone leading those, those, those protests? Yes, there is. Uh, it is a foreigner, in fact, two foreigners, and they are the ones leading the chants. Yeah, I'd like to approach uh, them. Ho, ho, uh, and uh, th- they are the ones who what? Leading the... They are leading the chants. Chants. Chants, ah, chanting. Chants. Yeah, okay. they're protest slogans. Uh, um, it doesn't seem like they have any... Uh, as you approach any... them, you, you find yourself being drawn into their... Uh, Magnetism. <laughs> oh, oh! You, 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 as you get, Russia? you approach them and you look at them and they look at you and you're and immediately you feel, man, these guys are amazing. I can't, I can't believe that these guys that that they're out here, um, at risk of their lives, leading the protest to vote. What, what charm and grace? What bravery? Is that a supernatural charm? Uh, you've experienced uh, all before. Mm-hmm. A quick aura perception might verify that. Well, to be fair, Labiana didn't even consider approaching them. <laughs> Labiana, you're standing back like, nope, that, that's, a, that's a big old pot of no for me. <laughs> she was never interested to begin with. <laughs> She's just like, eh, just protesters. <laughs> uh, they'll get across my slab eventually. I wasn't asking whether they looked like they'd been drinking or something. Intoxicated. Nicodemus is gone. Okay. Uh, can, can I check? Can I check our perception on them? Yes, you or can. Absolutely. Completely on, on the okay. Yep. Uh, perception plus empathy. Yep. Difficulty eight. Mm-hmm. It's like Labian will do that thing, like she'll keep walking and then nope. realize everyone, no one else is around her and she'll be like, What? Ah, what? Oh fuck it. <laughs> Alright. Alright guys, I think I think this is a good t- point to pause for a minute so we can get some mm-hmm. coffee or tea or whatever. Let's come back in ten and uh pick it back up. Mm-hmm. Alright, uh and we're back. So um you guys were talking to some protesters who were busy uh chanting at a a politician's house. Yeah. I think uh, it was Nicodemus who approached them. 
Any distinguishing marks on them? No. Something to remember them? Nope. They're just, uh, they're very foreign looking. They're definitely does, not native Romans. Does he see Agatha? Well, he sees you guys there. It's not, it's not Agatha. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, I'm I'm actually away from the crowd uh, with the group, but if the group starts approaching the crowd, I will probably follow with, follow them. So I'm I... definitely not following Nicodemus. I will stay with the uh, the bigger part of the group. I'm gonna try to make my way over to one of the leaders. Try to get his attention. Okay, they she you they two guys. One of them sees you. It says, uh, um, sister, join us. Join us for equality. What is the matter? What has happened? Oh, it's the same thing that's always happened. We're denied the right to vote. Denied to know where our taxes go. Uh, oppressed by the Roman overlords. We demand full citizenship rights. And they begin leading the chant again. And they're going to try to entrance you, to bring you into their fold. Uh, I think it's a difficulty of your willpower, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, yes. Uh, entrancement, right? Yep. Yeah, difficulty uh, yeah. of your willpower. If it's coherent willpower, it's 5. If it's permanent willpower, it's 6. It's his current willpower. It's a failure. Uh, uh, is, is you do, you have, by the way, you have no idea they tried anything. The, there's no sensation. It just doesn't work. And they're like, yes, join us. Join us, sister. Uh, they have no signs to push in your hand, otherwise they would. But he puts his arm around you and he goes, and he, he like hisses and he draws his hand back. He's like, oh, yeah, join us anyways. Join us. And they start chanting and they're still marching. They're trying to drag like you the, into it. I just like the mental image of that. Like, <laughs> okay, doesn't matter. I... Demons, demons can still pro. Demons can still fight for equality, right? <laughs> I will. I will. Um, I, I will either case um, stay uh, not near the crowd. Um, like no matter what, this is just personal feelings of. Uh, yeah, so I'm not approaching the if compelled, but if I'm compelled, yeah, I'm approaching the crowd. This well, is nobody drags of... you and pushes you over there. Okay, this is uh, this is a case of Vlad not really, you know, caring about, and I think you would understand why he wouldn't care about for people protesting about this thing. Oh, absolutely. So he does not... Yeah, so he does not really have a reason to approach to the crowd or interact with them. He's just waiting for his coterie to return, essentially, and then they can go to the yeah. haven. Exactly. Labian is pretty much doing exactly the same thing. Basically stopped because she realized that besides Vlad, all okay. the others kind of disappeared. And she just went, where the hell did they, where the hell did they go? As uh, one of the, the other ringleader walks up and uh, takes over. Says, uh, sister, come on, tell us, what's your name? And you look at her, and she is just so alluring. There's something about her. It's just eyes of pale, glinting gold in the dark, and skin that just seems so smooth and attractive. They're also She's trying to get you involved. And this time they got one, two, three, four, five successes. All of us? Yeah. All with minus one difficulty due to enchant due to uh, Serpentus. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Sorry, uh, did you say it affects everyone? It affects um, Albana because it's a targeted power. Oh, okay, okay, sorry. Nick she's going to join us. Uh, she's, she asked, where are you from? That they deny such rights. All of, all of us, us, all of us, from outside of, of the Latin area. From here, from this city, to the, uh, to the uh, mountains of the north, to the uh, ocean of the south. 
uh, to the east in Greece, uh, to the coast of, across the sea, all of us everywhere are denied those things that we pay taxes for, denied the ability uh, to so much as vote, denied uh, the ability to command our men in battle. It's an outrage that where Roman touches that the Roman land extends, its citizens are not, its inhabitants are not granted the position of citizens. That's right. That's right. And uh, so they, they, they're, they're getting you involved, deeply involved in, in their rhetoric. Uh, it's getting a little bit louder. Uh, on, everybody one, make, a, uh, make a perception plus alertness roll hearing based. Oh, okay. What's the difficulty? Um, six. Okay. Because we'll you're, you're attempting to hear it over the chance. Uh, alertness. Okay. Yep. Difficulty six. Yep. This all hearing. So are, we, are we all making this roll? Yes, everyone. I got three successes. Because charm exists. I love that freaking merit. God, I love that merit. Yeah. Yeah, I love it too. So, wait, what, what diff did you say? Six. All right. Um, if you have two or more successes, you hear the tromping of feet. Um, more, uh, not quite marching in lockstep, but pretty close. Uh, they are coming down the street, and you hear trot, 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 and you hear some shouting, and men turning the corner. And uh, at their head is uh, somebody bearing a uh, banner of the uh, of the uh, Praetor Urbanus. He's not, he's not the actual praetor, but he's bearing his authority. And they begin shouting at the protesters, Break this up! Break it up and get out of here! Go! Go home! Go to your... Go to your rooms! Go to the insulae! Go outside of Rome! I don't care! Just get out of here! Now! And the men begin wading in, and, the, and people start breaking up and running. Would uh, Albna be able to try to dominate him? Um, yeah, you can select a target to dominate. Yes, uh, the guy that is the leader of the group, the one that is... Um, I forgot his name that you just said. Uh... The, uh, the uh, agent of the Praetor? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Going to... If you're, going to... you're using your merit? Yeah, and um, what merit? The enchanted uh... voice? The eyes. No, no, she's just trying to dominate okay. him. Okay. Yep. I right, I think both of them work for your for your dominate, so um, I was trying to intimidate so and All they... right, so your difficulty is uh three. She's going to try to tell him you oh, don't me to roll first or to tell what I Um, say it and then roll. It is this this pro you are going to allow this protest to remain. This protest to remain. All right, you go ahead. That's a valid command. Okay. Yeah. Um, so people, his men have already begun wading in and bashing heads, and uh, people are running, and then he. All but you walk up to him and you say what you say, and uh, he goes, "All right, that's enough. That's enough." And he immediately starts grabbing people. Stop! Stop! That's enough. Leave them alone. They've done enough. We 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 can get out of here. Let's go. And he tries to like shove people away, trying to put a stop to it. Um, it's a little bit late, but uh, probably three quarters of the people have been run off, scared off, um, including the two ringleaders who are gone. She's going to, one of the people that remain, she's going to try to approach one of them and ask them, who is the ring, uh, who are those people, the ring leaders? You, you know, I don't know. They just kind of showed up and, uh, you know, everything they said made sense. I, I don't remember, really know their names. 
Do you know anything about them? Where we might find them again? Well, hopefully they come back and uh, keep on doing what they're doing. Definitely. It is a good cause. I... It's a shame that they end in such a way. But yeah, well, so... we're, we're going to teach them a lesson one day. One day, one day they'll know. There's a grin of nice faces. She sees that and she finds herself nodding along. Still mm -hmm. a bit by the fervor from the entrancement. Yes. And that's a bit glorious. I hope that is I hope that is is going to be the first of many protests. She's going to return over to the group. Right. Let's let's return to our haven. That was an interesting sight to behold. I didn't know, Albina, that you were so interested in human politics and rights. I ain't, but there's something special about the girl that was leading the group. Really? Interesting. Well, we can focus on that later on. We have some more immediate, important discussion to hold. Okay, I assume we are in Haven now. Yeah, you make it all the way back just fine. Yeah, um, so, um, okay. Here's my honest opinions. I do feel that for things they provide and for the things they are asking and for the things they are not hindering us to do, it seems as a fair deal to accept their offer. To be fair, they have not said what kind of extent of the service uh, well, they expect they us to commit to. Um, just because they say, uh, you can do whatever you want unless we call upon you, doesn't mean they are not going to call upon you every, every damn night. That might be true, That's but they... very did... vague what they said. But they also said, our allies, your allies. No, what they, they also what they did say was the more or less standard client and uh, client and patron relationship. So perhaps this is that. But what I think is going to happen is that Rome is going to be so soon torn apart by uh, Mithras and the first citizen, because what what the the aggressive tactics of Mithras's cult is likely going to become to, will come to uh, Camillus's attention, and it may very well be that. Uh, it's going to turn uh, between him and him and them. Now, at Shouldn't this point, help. I only have two points I wish to make. One, now, when you say before that uh, their allies become our allies, you've also got to remember their enemies also become our enemies. Second, have any of you even thought about what kinds of things they would be asking us to do? Mm-hmm. For, especially for uh, giving us all of these leniencies and benefits, so to speak. We have no idea. And, and, uh, it's nothing worth considering, uh, I, would, I think. The, yeah, definitely. Especially that in the usual client and patron relationship, uh, there is always the matter of choice, and here we are very diminished by it. Diminished of and I suppose a third question arises on that front. If they're really asking us to be their clients, why come to us posing as a cult? 
purpose behind that? Oh, actually, that's not a problem because uh, Critius clearly believes it's a cult. And, and I believe they're very fat on the intimidation factor. And hence why he didn't just come and say, hey, we just join, join our club. Remember, this is a cult, so it has us versus them. It has, you know, uh, all the aspects of a cult, but even worse, because we are talking about kindred cults, not human. So it is understandable they approached from a aggressive standpoint to make their case clear to us. I do think that we do not have, we personally do not have the means to stop this oppression, but if we can find another patron, another powerful kindred in Rome, which I have no idea who that might be other than Prince Camillus, because I'm not still involved with the politics yet. Um, Maybe we can stop it that way, if we can find another patron who can back us. Maybe had you could go and ask Ahemus how he found the um, ability to not get crushed by the cult of Mitras after uh, refusing their offer. Uh, he, he right told us that he just fought back against them. He just made himself a his not well. His, yes, he just made his assets hard enough to target to the point that came more trouble than what is worth it. Right, but can we do the same thing? That's the question then. I do not think we have the ability to, to do the same thing, in my personal opinion. I do not think we have the right amounts of uh, influence, essentially, and contacts. Uh, so I do think our best option is either to find a, another patron who can help us, or refuse and fight or accept and join the cult of Mitras. To be fair, with all respect to Ihamas's ability, just because he repelled held the attempts so far, doesn't mean he has completely gotten rid of the attention. Uh, you've heard the man himself. He, Cretius, clearly believes Ihamas is going to pay. And I have this feeling that he that he was personally aggrieved by the fact that I Hamas played hard to get. The question is how much did I Hamas actually knew about what was happening? He never mentioned me approach uh, or the possibility of joining the cult of Mithras. Mm -hmm. He ever got as far as we did? Or did he manage to Grown off his assailants before that even came to that point. Was it mentioned if I uh, Hamas knew about the allies? The Egyptian allies? Uh, well, it, well, he knows now. I'm curious if it played a part in his decision. Yeah, it's possible that he knew beforehand. Um, but, uh, mm -hmm. reg again, regard regardless of whether he knew before, he knows now. Um, mm -hmm. Because, quite simply, I told him. Mm -hmm. uh, well, I suppose it's... it's mm, uh, all, all, all the same, it doesn't matter because even if not, uh, it, it goes without saying that I Hamas wants to preserve his status quo and not become subservient so directly to anyone else. So I guess the qu question remains, who, who do we stick for? Do we 
bring the matter to Prince Camillus, but though we don't we don't really have much in terms of evidence. Um, we like the gravity of the claim. And I alternatively, do we really seek a, a, another patron? I I do think that it's uh, worth a shot to contact with the prince and explain to him. Um, I do not think we will lose too much for doing that. I am personally okay that as long as our patron, whomever, does not um, hinder my arts, I am okay with working for them. So if you guys want to go for another patron, I'm okay. We just need to make sure that our patron is actually enough to, you know, pull off Cult of Mitras from uh, top of us. Mm. At this point, I, I guess, you know, a patron is obviously a good thing to have. Obviously, my opinion, though, is that it not be Cretheus or Mithras. But I do actually want to ask, because I'm curious, why do we look upon them with such hesitated and suspicious eyes, more so than any other possible patron we may strive for? You do understand that whomever might be our patron, they will still require us to do stuff that will help their agenda, which includes hindering their enemies in some ways, thus meaning their enemies will become our enemies. So it does not make a difference if we become the member of Cult of Mitras or some other patron, either case we are dealing with their enemies as if they are our enemies. It, it, it matters because their agenda might their their agendas might inherently clash with our own. Not to mention hardships and grievances with the the allies. Precisely. And and there there's also the matter of simple courtesy. So far. In most client patron relations, we've been on civil terms. They began with war of attrition. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, look at their track record already. Do we want to be? Do we even want to think about whether or not we'd be? We, we'd want to be involved. Then I suggest that we uh, try to contact with Prince Camillus then and first hear him out. Afterwards, we can try to contact with another, in a, another kindred for our, um, with the goals of uh, with the goals of acquiring a patron to protect us. Because here's my feeling right now. He did not say that he was going to pull off. The people on our resources uh, while giving us time to discuss. So I think he will keep on pushing us from that side while we are discussing. So we need to make a decision before it starts, you know, piling up too much that we start losing money and other stuff. We still got the pressure on our back. So we need to act fast.
So who got the status? The status for arranging a meeting with the prince? We need to think if we if what we have is actually of substance. Because well, we, is that I Hamas was approached or attacked, and we were attacked, and and that's it. Does not actually stand out in terms of uh, in terms of how other children deal with each other. Um, I I have a question, Chris, and this is actually a question that I uh, speak out loud in character as well, so that others can hear it. But it is also a out of character question to you. Um, when it comes to kindred, uh, how to say it? I guess justice system. Do you need uh, proofs with substance, or if it if someone can know that you are telling the truth, they will be able to you know help you? How does it work? Um, kindred justice is basically an oxymoron. No, okay, yeah, sorry. Yeah. Well, it for truth that it, it really is because it's who has the bigger stick. Um, and yes, there, there are a lot of times people get punished for what should not have been punished. Um, but you have to be pretty influential to make that happen. So the question right. is, is what has happened so far really worthy of breaking out the, I'm going to punish another venture stick. Right. All right. Anybody? Uh, does anybody have politics three or higher? I don't think so. Um, I don't believe so. No. Okay. All right. Well, just two. Okay. Yeah. With politics three, you'd probably know without even making a roll or anything that. You know, you're very unlikely to get anything out of the prince other than if you can't defend yourself, you don't deserve to, 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 to keep what you got. Right. Uh, I do, you know, I do think, we, okay, yeah, we do not have the, you know, we do not have the evidence to show, um, provide enough reason, but... Then it means we need to find a patron. Because we don't have the option of going to the prince and taking his help. And I do not think a boon will be enough uh, to get rid of this um, operation either. We will need a proper alliance or uh, patronship to actually have a long standing. Uh, shield against the cult of Mitras. So the question is then, which kindreds do we think would be good fit for patronship? Hmm. I do believe that I am on. Well, I do have status on the adventure, so I could perhaps be a good opportunity to try to ask other ventures to take us under their wings. I mean, I think we need to be specific with which. But I think uh, Labiana has status status with uh, Ventry as well, so that's, that makes two person. I think you have status one. Um, okay, uh, went to, I mean, as this, I do, I do heard the name Beshtar as a powerful tinder. It might be a good choice as well. Okay. Uh, yeah, I do, I do offer, I, I, for us to discuss. Okay. Is that uh, is that working a little bit better? 
That's oh, I can I can okay. hear you guys okay. at least right. clearly. Do you want me to repeat or did you guys hear what I said? Yeah. Mm. Okay, I can. So yeah, Beshter is a powerful kindred. Uh I guess we can try Camillus once more, the prince. I do not think uh, he is going to be up for that. We, well, you guys, sorry, you guys failed him. Um, there is. Oh, Embrace and Athens. Okay. Well, there is Alexander, another Ventro. Mm -hmm. That's uh, and the fourth generation as well, so quite powerful. I thought he was embraced in Kartik, but no, he was embraced in Athens, so he is probably very old. Uh, so there, yeah, there is Alexander. There is uh, Redolonius Nosferatu. Aconia Messalani, La Sombra. He, she's a companion to Camillus. For for the record, she's also she's also kind of on the outs with her clan is the thing though. Okay. Yeah, you uh, probably don't know that. Okay. I mean, um, Alvina might know. Hmm. But... Uh, we got the. Let's see, we might make an alliance with Ahomus. Maybe that could. I mean, not really a patronship, but an alliance of. Uh, kindred, and that might be good. Not as powerful or as safe as patronship, but nonetheless still powerful. Um, Servius, I... Marius, Nosferatu, companion of Camillus, uh, Trifosa, sheriff. Uh, she is powerful. We've seen her nuke uh, whole place uh, with Menas. Um, she might not be stable as a kindred, but she definitely is a serious. Trifosa uh, is, has no position. She's a seer. She's a she foretells the future. That's it. She's extremely uh, highly respected. She has okay, no who, position. Okay. Oh, who who was the sheriff then? You I, Inanna is um, Inanna. the Wigil, um, okay. soon to be uh, the yeah. Praetor Urbanus of the uh, kindred kind. Um, yes, sir. Uh, yeah, I, I, then I, may, I mean her. I, we could go for her as a patron. Um, let's see what do we have. Uh, yeah, there's pretty much everything on the sheet, at, on the roll 20 at least. These are the powerful names I'm aware of. There is Democritus, but I don't think we want him as our patron. All right. Uh, Democritus is not currently in Rome, maybe. And he is any of us, so yeah, having him as a Briton would be a big no-no. It would be kind of funny though. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so this is yeah, this is pretty much the list. So uh, you know, pick whomever you think is the best choice, guys. I am up for Besh there just because with meta knowledge, how fun he is at later uh, years, you know, with the all that uh, stuff he does later on. So I would like to follow him because of where he would lead us. So, there is something I want to point out with the Ihana Swan that, like, I've been keeping, I've been refraining from, you know, going too hard on that because obviously conflict of interest. But um, I do want to point out that in terms of his own influence, he did manage to uh, to maneuver enough assets at one point to have Camillus pass a law affecting the entirety of Italy. Yeah. But he did so after like uh, several missions that was quite helpful, if you remember. We told that Artemis sending us and Ichamus uh, to political missions for the war. So he has done a bunch of great deeds and, I guess, boons uh, to get that much power. So I think he used all of that power as well with that movement, with that right. Um, 
So I do not think he has this same amount of power at the moment. I think that was like peak of his influence. Um, yeah, so as I said, I'm up for Besh there. Alexander seems like a good choice. Uh, a Nosferatu patron would be fun, interesting. So, Redalonius or Servius. Okay, <laughs> so what do you guys think? Come on, speak. <laughs> What's your opinions? Uh, silence does not help. I think we should stick to one of the other event rules. Uh, the one that we approach in that we are uh, to give information on Facon creatures on how to contact him might actually be the best idea. We already have a we already hold in a few booms, so if we can fulfill those booms to him, we can then uh, ask him to take us in a more permanent manner. Who 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 are you speaking about? I believe it is Gaius that we approached that gave us the information on Gaius Marcellus. Yes, I believe it was seen right. Mm, yeah, um, Gaius Let's Marcellus, see. child of Alexander. Child of Alexander. We approach to him. Uh, and what? He owes us spoons? Or? No, we owe him. We owe him spoons, okay. Uh, I mean, yeah, Child of Alexander, that's the fifth generation went through. Uh, he is powerful, definitely. Uh, but he is also embraced in Carthage, so, you know, I mean, final assault on Carthage, so, yeah. He's not as old as we might prefer. I mean, he's younger than us, as a matter of fact. Uh, I do think, I do think it's, it would be better if you go for Alexander, his sire, than he himself. I I don't understand the I I don't understand the um, how to say it what's the word for it uh, the charm of going for another rent true patron considering how you know well first of all road of kings and second of all how went through our you know political and social and influence type of characters so I don't understand the charm for going for the clan went true for a patron uh, but I do feel that Beshter will probably have equal influence in such manners as well considering he is a torador and uh, while winter might be more famous for their political games the torador are still quite powerful as well when it comes I, to politics i will i will have to consult uh, the fates again because when i when i did so when choosing a patron after first arriving in this city in fact i will they warned me that serving under Bester would see my develop see a safe but slow development. I mean, we are kindreds, but yeah, go go read your sky, be one with the land, and connect to it, and see what the land shall tell you. Uh, I would also like to point out that. With the venture through our uh, late association with Artemis, and I believe some of us have attended uh, funeral rites uh, through the how many years? Um, you've been doing the rites with the Temple of Diana for more than 25 years, which has granted you venture status one because of your dedication to tradition. Uh, yeah. Uh, so basically, with the Ventru, we're starting from somewhere at least, and with Vester, we're going to be starting from complete scratch. And since we're pre pressed uh, for time, um, we should consider this one as well. He's going to play us cats and he's going to make us play cats and mice as we try to become his clients, while our resources are sapped, and perhaps the Ventru might. Uh, one of the venture might have at least, perhaps at least, better, better turn, that, better than. Then, mm -hmm. 
then I do suggest that we go for Alexander. He seems old, powerful, went through as well. I'm not sure if he's on the road of kings, uh, but most likely he is. But his picture in the roll 20, that seems more like a Torador kind of picture than a Ventru, so I'm not sure. He might be Road of Sin as well. Uh... Yeah, I was, I was tempted for a moment to make a joke about um, the mortal Alexander for a second there and just say, Alexander's Road was a road of this is all mine. What once was once yours is now mine. Alexander, Road of Alexander. <laughs> uh, so uh, yeah, that's just pretty much okay. I'm I'm up for Alexander. I I do suggest it's this not my final suggestion, but my most current suggestion that we go and contact Alexander and try to make him our patron. At least see at least see what he has to say. If yeah, we can character um, in terms of Alexander, we, we any of us know offhand whether he might be considered a enemy or an ally of Mithras, cult of Mithras. Um, he doesn't have much to do with the army. I. <clears throat> uh, he... You're not really sure where he focuses his attention, but you know he's not militarily inclined. He's, he's, not, he's not a humanist, but he's quite often found talking to Julia Antasia, who is the head of the humanist faction. So he's so. probably like one of those people who isn't on humanity, but appreciates it. Yeah. That's a good, that's a given at least. Or if he is on humanity, it's really low. <laughs> mm. Um, I'm. Um, off the top of my head, I can't think of any major objection to to Alexander. So you know. Just to be just to, just to be clear on one possible scenario, if we enlist to anyone, and at the later stage, uh, Mitrask evolves to the point of ch of making a habit of challenging the greater players, we might find ourselves swayed under uh, under uh, Mitras's cult as well, part of the clan. Uh, well, let's... but that's a far future for now. Let's yes, let's think about it when it happens. Um, you guys are already in line to not accept uh, joining Mitras, and just considering about future, far future does not help. I uh, yeah, let's tomorrow. Let's meet with Alexander, or as as soon as possible. Maybe some of you can pull your, you know, so maybe some of you can uh, pull the Ventru status uh, to have a sh sooner meeting with one of that one of, uh, Alexander with Alexander and then I think there is nothing more we need to discuss well there is the lupine thing but I do not think we are focusing it at the moment so ah about the lupine thing I do have the uh, flesh crafted uh, humans ready. Uh, you just need to give me the location and time, and I will deliver them before you proceed to execute your plan. Mm. Noted. Okay. 
every time there's a, mm -hmm. like the Coterie would notice that every time there's mention of, you know, capturing a werewolf, there's a bit of a weird look that crosses LaBiena's face. <laughs> She'll never think it's a good idea. Yeah. Uh, granted, I will be able to join you in the fight and, well, final death is not a trouble for me personally. But I still prefer not to die. So I will be helping you with the fleshcraft that monstrosities. By the way, actually, how did you how did you manage that exactly? I I feel like we kind of glossed over that. Well, this much I can say without expecting anything in return. When you study the arts that I do and become a proper scholar, you transcend the flesh. Flesh is my tool. It does what I want it to do. And I actually, what Vlad does is he says that is extend his arms like Christ on the, what is it called, on the thing Fact. he was saying. Uh, yeah, crucifix. Like, so I uh, extend my arms like that, and what happens is, without I actually touching myself or altering myself, you know, uh, my body just changes. Um, essentially, what would be a different human body, like just in there, just itself, without me actually saying anything or doing anything. The flesh, the you know, fat bones. Everything just changes simultaneously. Mm. Flesh is only a matter of hindrance to me, and even then, I transcend it. If you need, if you want to follow the same scholar pet I did, you are welcome in my haven for a cost. I can teach you. I, I I do like the idea of just when everyone's just sitting down talking, it's just like, actually, wait a minute. <laughs> would be what cost? <laughs> the cost you do not need to worry about. It's Considered, considering what you will get if you follow the same education pet I did, it's trivial. But you must be open to change mentally and physically if you want to truly learn what I can offer. Hmm. Regardless, um, I'm getting off topic there, um, let, let us, hmm, let's make arrangements to try and uh, get hold of Alexander, I suppose. Yes, uh, let's do that. He seems uh, one of the best options to go for at this circumstances hmm it should probably be noted that Alexander's child uh, was the one who has given us means to contact Cretius hmm but that that may just be that all Ventru know how to reach Cretius So perhaps it doesn't mean anything. We can only hope. All right, so <clears throat> you do have some time to consider this. Unfortunately, your time does slowly trickle away. 
a night, a couple of nights go by as you debate and talk and debate and talk. And you are going through your accounts, uh, the three of you that have your resources under attack, and realize that your letters of credit are looking a little light. You are all down a temporary point of resources. Right, we need to get this done now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. See Alexander. Well, uh, do, we, do we get the meeting with Alexander? Uh, in those couple of days, you can yeah, um, have arranged uh, for a meeting. The three of you combined uh, have enough status to pull that off for certain. Okay. Uh, did you did you say that we lose lose one resources? One temporary point temporary. of resources. Okay. Um, in essence, it's like you didn't get paid. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm, um, I'm about to make a comment there, but I'll save it. Okay. Um, so yeah, let's let's uh, attend the meeting with Alexander now that we made it. Okay. Um, he has agreed to meet you at the bathhouse. You all, um, of course, travel there, no problems whatsoever. You've been here how many hundreds of times over the years now? Mm-hmm. Uh, he is uh, relaxing in the uh, heated pool room, the area. The calderium is what it's called. Uh, there is a beautiful-looking young woman with him. Um, he's, uh, kissing on her and, you know, in general, taking little nips and nibbles at her a little bit at a time, uh, drop by precious drop, uh, as she giggles and splashes in the pool with him. And of course, every time he nips at her, her eyes roll back as the vampiric kiss overwhelms her senses. And then she comes to again and they keep having a good time. Okay. Uh, yeah, sure. Let's approach. I'm gonna the approaches and uh, not interrupt. Not uh, as she takes a position further away enough from the food so that her body does not uh, cause the water to go cold. Yeah, we've learned enough from the Gracchi incident. Right. Um, so. <clears throat> Does similar. Hey, I will. Yeah, I will follow. I will follow the steps of the rest of the country. I actually stay behind everyone else because I'm not as good at with the true manners as some others might be. Um, roll me a d10 there, Vlad. Ah, oh, that's true. That's true. I my shape has changed. Please. It's a nine. <laughs> Right, finally. Monstrous transformation. Yeah, you can get as wild as you want. Yeah, you you come out looking like a cross between a grasshopper and a human. Green chitin all over your skin. Um, weird, useless wings on your back. Um, Mandible-looking things on your face. Uh, your feet aren't feet; they're little claws with little fur on them. Uh, but you stand up and your knees and legs are the same, just greenish looking, little patches of grasshopper chitin on you. Um, uh, everyone who sees you instantly screams in horror and, oh my god, and tries wait, to run wait, away. I, I, I will use Ophuscate to not get my great reach. Okay. I, I don't want to show up in, like, well, wait, am I in the Elysium right now? Well, you're in your... your Haven, that's where you have to sleep. Oh, okay. It's in my haven. People run away from me. Oh, yeah. But didn't we establish that they know the monster I am already? Yeah, but you're probably probably (laughs) going to be beyond even what they were prepared for. Yeah. 
Yeah, that might be the case. But as long as it's not a masquerade breach, as far as things goes, I'm okay with it. Yes, th this will uh, be considered a masquerade breach. Okay, but th these are my servants, right? So yes, they're your servants. But you can't go out in okay. public like this. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I can't go out in public, yeah. So what I'm going to do is use obfuscate while I'm out in public so people okay. do not see What's what I What's your obfuscate level? Uh, my obfuscate is 2, so I can become invisible to humans. Okay. Um, so is, it, is, that, is that going to be a problem? When you appear in the Haven, everybody roll courage. Except for okay. you, Vlad. Right. We we have to roll as well, right? Yes. So we're doing that now? Gotcha. Yes. And if you botch, you attack the monster that just invaded your haven. That's not a botch, it's a fail. <laughs> Alright, Hatchet said, this grasshopper-looking motherfucker just walked in, and Labiana, just walked into your group haven. <laughs> In your uh, cult, and I need you two to react, cause yeah, this is a a monstrosity that just squished in the door with only one eye. I should point out. I <laughs> don't want to be a, a Dimitri. <laughs> I ha, ha, ha begins taking several steps back. Say Vlad if you're him. I will. I will. Um... Yeah, I can't yeah, 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 I'm doing bug. Of... I'm doing bug sounds essentially. <laughs> my my antlers tingling. I think it's called antlers. I'm not sure. Uh, just kind of. Labiana just kind of instinctively draws the gladius. She's like, "What is that?" <laughs> Must can I? Of, must be one I of thought I'd seen everything. Can I? Can, can I use? Can I use Visitor to give myself human sound? Um. Yeah. Give me a um, wits think, and body craft roll. I I think Visitor one is intelligence actually. Intelligence okay. flesh crafting. Okay. Do that, please. Yeah. Uh, where is it? Intelligence, flesh crafting. Where are you? Oh, here. Okay, it's lagging. Uh, I actually got, sorry, there's three ones here, but one of that. So you got three away, successes. So two All right, um, yeah. So the mouth mandible piece thingy. Begins to morph and forms more human looking shapes and human vocal cords. Mm -hmm. And I spent a lot for that. Uh, <clears throat> do, not, do not worry, friends. I'm Vlad. I don't I, know if I believe you. I, I say the password. Oh, yeah. This is creepy. Can't you can't you stop it? I wish I could. Just, I wish you were not Vlad, so I could have just kill you rather than keep looking at this. This is amazing. <laughs> I, I just imagine everyone turning to ha with that comment. Yeah, I was just thinking that Lavian is kind of confused and kind of mortified. As I said, as I said, if you remember, the flesh is nothing but something I have transcended. This is... But your current form doesn't make sense. What are these for? Yeah, like, why, why it's, it's, would you want to look useless. like that? It may not be functional oh. wings, but I understand the form I... Assume, I embrace, I devour it. Uh, uh, is this going to become the thing with the dragons in Guards Guards, where just every other comment's like, that shouldn't work, why is this working? <laughs> Do not worry, 
I do have the art of art of obfuscate to make sure that the mortals do not see when I look like this or similar. I think my best if Alexander also does not see it. Yeah. I do not I do not think maybe bugging him. Oh, oh. oh. Uh, that, that was uh, 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 you you lose one experience point for that. <laughs> Um, Alexander, I do not think kinders will find it uh, too much trouble. They should have the stomach to comprehend and acknowledge the transcendent creature I am. Non nonetheless, well, we're going to be meeting in a public bathhouse, so... Oh, it's I'll not the kindred. Is it's not the kindred bathhouse. It is a kindred bathhouse, just... but such displays are frowned upon. Yeah, and okay. like, I was just and... gonna say, depending on, like, considering our reaction, Labienas and Pats, I think that kind of says it all right there. Yeah. Well, and, uh... and okay. Hats, Hats' reaction was comparatively subdued and interested. Um, okay, so uh, if that's the if, if that's the case, what I'm going to do is spend two blood to activate the vicissitude, vicissitude. I don't know how to pronounce that one. It's crazy. Uh, uh, just call it yeah. that. Yeah, uh, flesh crafting. I will activate flesh crafting two and three uh, to change my appearance and my bones uh, to appear as a uh, normal human, essentially. Uh, some r random human. Uh, pretty much. Okay. So why? So yeah, from my bug appearance, all of the shit just starts molding and shifting, and sound of disgusting bones and flesh, and you know, you see the muscles. My eye sockets just uh, moving around. Things growing, things becoming smaller, all this mixture of weird gore porn. Alright, so you guys do eventually make it. Um, you enter the uh, bathhouse. You see Alexander cavorting with his uh, meal for the night. And as you come in, he looks at the lady and he says, uh, he looks, gazes. Uh, lovingly into her eyes. And I said, my dear, go uh, go to the dressing room and wait for me there. Uh, you may sleep when you get there. And she giggles and she gets up and she leaves. And he waves a hand um, at the uh, stonework or at the pool in front of him if you guys wanted to join him inside the water. Yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. It's polite. Um, and of course, we'll excuse um, Alba if she doesn't. Yeah, she'll just be sitting by the edge. Yeah, that's a, a, a prudent move. Fabian also refrains. Uh, okay, so who wants to start? Character, I've, I've never actually thought about it. I wonder what would happen if, you know, someone like Labiena sort of a corpse like, probably with holes all over her, what, whether she'd get waterlogged or some shit. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, for the first time, you feel the uh, the uh, solidified fat deposits in your body beginning to loosen up a little bit. <laughs> it feels simultaneously disturbing yet oddly relaxing. <laughs> yep. All right. Yeah. So he's uh, looking at all of you guys, and he says, uh, "Well, don't be shy. I I'm here as we agreed." I'm willing to listen I, to what you have to say. I, I of course, do the um, 
Well, first of all, I wait for others to do the respectful bowing or whatever greet it is to do. And then I do the same thing, essentially, as they. Uh, and then I approach uh, towards Alexander. Uh, again, always keeping the respectful boundaries, not trying to go over it, you know. Um, Roll me wits and etiquette, please. Yes. Wits and etiquette. Yep. This six. Um, okay. Uh, etiquette is here. Okay, that's just a fader. But I do say that I do it after everyone does it, so does that help in any way? Well, you're kind of copying them, and you don't see anything going on wrong here, so we'll put it like that. Okay. Okay. Alright. Um, well, is there anyone else who wants to start, or you guys are silent, so should I, I don't know, should I... I not. Well, if we wish to uh, get the basic basic reason for the meeting um, out of the way first, so that we know where we stand, we are. Um, what would be the, pl the respectful term in this scenario for someone who um, is more, you know, above us in age and power, but not like a prince or anything? Elder. Hmm. Okay, so just calling it. Um, um, dear Elder, we wish to. We are currently looking for a new patron, and we would be honored uh, if to be considered uh, under your service. Well, it's lovely to hear that I am. Considered for such a lofty position, but uh, let me. Oh, wait, that was totally sarcastic. <laughs> yeah, I thought so. But, uh, let me let me question you a little bit. Let me see if it's uh, a good match here. Should a should an unmarried woman be allowed to choose her husband? No. Such is the duty of her father. Hat will remain silent. Um, I will approach because I'm, I'm male. Um, I will approach, no, maybe someone else should take the matter in hand. Um, <clears throat> I also give a look at uh, Nicodemus as well, but otherwise I proceed to talk and say, uh, as Het just said, no, we are I, have, looking... I haven't said anything. You didn't, you didn't say anything? Uh, not, to that, not to the question. Oh yeah, no, I'm I'm talking up I'm referencing to I'm looking for we are looking for a patron thing, not not your answer to that question. Okay. As had said at the beginning, um well first of all, as an answer to your question, my own opinion is that no, they should not. It should be the man doing it. No, I cannot say I am a man or a female for the purposes of gender, but such things I do not care about. <clears throat> uh, we are looking for a mighty, powerful, influential, elder, respected, wise kindred to be our patron and to serve such a admirable elder 
of course, as the efficacy of patronship dictates uh, with the um, the world I'm looking for is with the um, with the services and benefits, of course. Um, and we thought, as Kotri, that Elder, you would be the best option among all other elders in Rome with the with the blue blood you hold and the authority that comes with having the name of uh, with uh, including the clan went through in your lineage what the fuck am I saying <laughs> okay <clears throat> No, I'm just bubbling some stuff. Yeah, he, he, he basically lets you ramble on like this for 10 or 15 minutes as you keep going over and over and over the same ground. Yeah, yeah, I'm pretty much just, yeah. you know, making him feel, you know, all that, uh, whatever the word is for, you know. He can be as smug as he wants right now. Um, and he, he, when you finally get to a point where you're like, okay, I'm just, I'm just retreading the same ground over and over, he's like, okay. Have you ever been in love? I've been in love with my art. Any of you truly, madly in love? A couple of times, yes. It never ended well. I'm in love with my studies. It's hard. I can't think of anything better. How will actually answer this question? It's hard to say. From what I've seen, to some extent, the experience can be very different for everyone who has it, so perhaps I have and never fully realized it. What about you? Um, you're awful quiet over there, uh, Nicodemus, was it? Have you been in love? Certainly, I have. Well, Nicodemus and Albina, tell me about it. What was it like? Really, truly, tell me. It was like meeting something that you had always been lacking, and something that you did not knew were lacking. Yeah, it was like meeting what is to be the same emptiness that you feel in the abyss. It's like if you were to find something that filled that gap, that could fill that empty, except that it goes away and the abyss remains. It offered the greatest elevation in... Oh, sorry, I thought we were done. No, no, yes, I am done. Oh, uh, it offered the greatest elevation in, uh, in the best times and uh, Greatest sorrows in the in the worst ones. But what's it what's it like? I mean, that I want to I want to know. I want to I want you to make me feel it. I want to know what it was like to wake up and know that there was someone there for you. What what did you feel? When you, when you knew you were in love, and what was it like to, to meet their gaze, to hold them, to slip in the bed with them? I, I, make me feel what it was like to be you. We can, if you wish to make you feel like that, we can exchange blood if such would be your desire, my elder. <laughs> oh, whoa. Wait, well, did you, was it something you thought in your mind before speaking out loud? Or? <laughs> You're saying that. That's not what I asked. I wanted told you. I want to know what was it like for you, truly. Paint paint a picture with your words. Tell me. Imagine a scene. You're alone in the darkness. You're now your the object of your desire of your passion is being late. 
and you cannot sleep. You tumble restlessly in the in your chamber, and you listen at the door, and there is a sound behind it, and you think maybe it's them, but it's not them, and yet you listen again and again to each and every shimmer behind the door, hoping it's them. And when they finally return to you, you feel relieved. Whole now, even though you've been empty throughout the whole night. And all this time, all these moments of doubt and and worry that that the that their luck may herald her, her out the worst fate were now Void, gone, because you are seeing them again. Nah, that's that's better. That's Dick Day was what I want coming in for the fave there. I mean, look, I could, a lot could explain true love as well, you know. I don't know if you would like that. <laughs> No, no. The, the, this is some out of character thing. I love doesn't say that. Uh, what attracts two people? What makes them feel? What? What? How do they know that love is right? You're asking hard questions. There are many things. They are the the common interests, for instance. If you share the same passions, you find you immediately feel closer to that person. There is the ambient feeling of wholelessness whenever the the other person is nearby. You feel better or improved or at calm when the other person is around. Uh, pleasure of talk, the pleasure of sharing common common activities like nourishment, walks, these fine details that are that are difficult to describe or perhaps can be only fleshed out by the most skilled of uh, quill and uh, uh, and, uh, uh, and, uh, and parchment are what define it. What's it like to be married? What's it like to be married <laughs> and in love? Well. <laughs> to be united in the sight of what is holy and know that it's the right thing to do. Very briefly, this does actually give Lobby in a pause and she remembers back a couple of hundred years, no, it's about 300 year odd years now, to when she was still mortal and her parents were still alive. <laughs> Yeah. Now, Vlad has like no idea and concept about what's being spoken here. He is like so alien to all of this conversation. Um, just to double check something. Um, Alexander, Alexander's of um, Greek background, yeah. Yep. Okay, so there he's is from one... Athens, as a matter of fact. Mm. There is one thing I can draw on here. Um... While, while I can't quite, with certainty, um, identify experiences of romantic love, I can make comparisons to its other shapes. And when you when you truly care about someone to that almost mad extent. There is a sense that you would die for them. 
without question, I often find. Do you enjoy the theater? Sorry, what was that? Do you enjoy the theater? It does have a certain um, fascination, I suppose. I, 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 I'm capable of enjoying it well enough. I often have my attention on focused on other things, sadly, but certainly if I had all, if I had could dedicate all time without concerns, uh, theatre would be one of the main subjects on my list. I will point out at this stage when Labiana said what she said, obviously she had a certain thing in mind that would ultimately depend on what is being shown. <laughs> it She's not going to say that. To find a play occurring in the time of while we are, at, while we are out in One thing to understand Why, yes. is that politics are they are not my life. They are a way to pass the time. A burden, if you will. A burden that I, unfortunately, am forced to bear. Should you still wish to become a client, there are conditions you must meet. You must become a patron of the arts. You must attend some social gatherings, sometimes with me and sometimes alone. You must help Rome's culture grow. To be solely based around the military and the worship of the military as your first patrons was so uh, used to seeing um, leads to stagnation. Rome must be better than that. You must be better than that. Can you do that? Uh, I have a question. <clears throat> uh, by art, are we talking about uh, confined arts of humans or any kinds of expression of one's nature? flesh creature if you cause me any problems any problems at all by using your arts amongst the people I will rip your spine out shove it down your throat and up your ass and then throw you to the roof and leave you for the Sun am I clear yes Good. I, I will mention his expression did not change and his tone of voice never changed through all of that. He, he said that just like he was asking us questions. Mm -hmm. <laughs> At the very least, it's something that I would be more than willing to um, put my efforts into. I can certainly think of much worse causes. I Indeed. knew someone that used to be very proficient in playing the harp. If I could hear such sounds again, if I could be a patron to see that art spreading throughout Rome. I think it would be very pleasing to me. Yeah, though, out of character for Labiana, this would be something that she would... Um, this is the burden to her. <laughs> like, why, why are you making with, me do this shit? Yeah. Because, like, she feels that it'd sort of be too geared towards 
back towards humanity. And she feels like she's come too far for this. In a sense. Well, I'll tell you what. I'll give you the rest of the night to think it over. If you still desire to serve as a client underneath me with my patronage, uh, you may meet me uh, at the uh, Fountain of Eagle, uh, where we will attend a musical showing. Okay, are we going to do a fest uh, tomorrow night? To... You have tomorrow night. Okay, One hour after sunset. And and out of character is starting to actually get um late in the night now. So yeah. Mm -hmm. So you can make a decision now. Um, would you like to take him as your patron or not? I think it would actually could actually be a really interesting change of pace, in a sense. True, it can be. But I have a lot of character questions. What you say it was essentially don't cause me problem, then it is fine, right? About the flesh crafting. Um, keep it out of sight. Yeah, yeah. Which I think I'm doing it right. I'm, yeah, pretty much. I? But yeah, you you were I'm hinting doing. around. Well, can I? Basically, what he got out of that was, you were like, well, I can do a flesh-crafted art exhibit? No. No, you can't. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh... Welcome, to, welcome to the Jeffrey Dahmer exhibit of art. <laughs> uh... <laughs> Listen, you are not supposed to judge art, okay? Even if it's about murdered people that looks disgusting. Yeah. It's art. It's my expression. It's modern art. Like... You, you're... You can play around this, like uh, you can show him your exhibits. He comes and he goes like, "Hmm, that's a very stylish sculpture of a nude woman." And then you go, like, "Thanks, I made it out of bugs." Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's like, yeah, this is. This is you know fake. how hard it is, like this, those those little little insides of a bug. It's really hard to twist them into nails, you know. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, I'm gonna give everybody a one XP for tonight. Okay. Yep. Um, if you do I'm come to a decision, uh, next game, uh, let me know. Next game, we will probably go ahead and do the werewolf encounter. Okay. Oh so. Also also, I'm cur I'm curious. Were were you um surprised by any of the decisions we made there? Um, I didn't see you going for Alexander. I'm actually glad you did because that does provide me a segue into the social war. That is a new perspective on it. Yeah. Hmm. I was gonna say probably one thing that Labiana would be another something else Labiana would be going into a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> Who, who, who did you think we would I mean, go for? Personally, for Labia, in this case. Um, personally? Uh, if you had to, since you kind of were getting forced to choose, uh, I figured you'd uh, all head for Bester. Really? Bester or Lysander, <laughs> one of the two. Why did Best. you think of Lysander? I haven't considered Lysander. Hmm. Oh Who was? I mean, I didn't see Lysander on the Roll20, so I just... I you know, believe but... Lysander is one of Artemis' uh, children. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, exactly. the, jerk, the, the, the jerk one. Oh, yeah, he's mm. definitely a... He's a dick. He's definitely a dick. There is no Can't getting around be. that. Um, but, I don't know, maybe there's a certain... With certain dicks, there's a certain trustworthiness to them, where you can always rely on them to be dicks. <laughs> And at least, uh, 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 not forgetting the familiarity. <laughs> yeah, but you guys Which know him be. decently well. You, you knew his sire decently well. Um, you but know what he's like, so. At the same time, we'll be coming back for more Artemis-style shit, perhaps. Yeah, mm. pretty much. I'm, exactly. Yeah, I'm. I'm okay with Alexander. Yeah, it's a different, a nice change of um, genre or whatever you name it. You know. We go from this 
let's do some intrigue and destruction and war political game and we shifted to more arts and like stuff like that essentially. Um, I, I, I guess I, I guess oh sorry, I was just gonna say, uh, I guess Labina's only question would be would everyone, like every one of us, the coterie, be required to attend these functions, in inverted commas? Um, yeah, but um, accommodations can be made. Uh, he actually expects to have to do, like, private boxes uh, where you can't see into them and maybe have to do a private performance where you he pays to have the the whole acting company comes to a a house to perform it, you know, whatever's going on, stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Inter- interesting. Um, um, because, um, I, I've seen some stuff on Roman theater actually. It was a, it was a, in some ways a strange beast because um, Roman theater was mostly done by slaves. And and a lot of the time they'd s- slip in a lot of surprisingly subversive shit in there. Yep, they were actors were considered to be the lowest profession in Rome. But it wants hmm. to be fun, you know. It's, it wants to be fun to watch actors doing stuff. I'm not sure. Hmm. But yeah. Wait, what was it? One of the main archetypes of Roman theater was the clever slave, who was able to outwit. His own master, for the master's own good, of course. <laughs> um, Chris, can I yeah. increase my empathy? Um, no. But you've tortured uh, some guys. Yeah. And crafted them. <laughs> you need to spend time amongst other humans, like people actually observing them, and participating, and just... understanding. I think this uh, act is going to be a perfect opportunity for that. Yeah, it might be indeed a perfect opportunity to see humans in their nature. I I just have to say that uh, aside from being perfectly fine with uh, with this new direction, uh, out of character, Nicodemus is absolutely absolutely thrilled at the idea because it gives some means of pushing the country back closer towards humanity again. It ain't happening, bro. It ain't happening. Actually, out of character. Shut up and do it. It's probably going to be perfect for Lobby in a situation because we'll be able to start seeing her sort of drifting further away because she's wanting to... Wanting to, but essentially she is... Um, kind of separating from her humanity. Her humanity is starting to fade. She'll be starting to drift away because she won't want to involve herself in any of that stuff. I think it will be better if you find a mentor and get in another pet because you're talking about humanity too now. It's going to take some while to get back at decent humanity. If you oh, I think she's on humanity. Time. You're on humanity three or four now, right? Four. Four. Yeah, once you're on humanity, if you're on humanity two, you need to start making people. To, when you're on a path rating of two, you got to start making willpower rolls, and you better pass. Mm. Otherwise, you can only eat vampire blood. And when you're um, on when you're on road one, that you don't get a willpower roll. You can only survive on vampire blood. Um. Yeah, and you know, it, I'm totally not laying any groundwork there. What? What? Huh? Yeah. Huh? What? All right. Um, next game is going to be December fifth. December fifth. Let's see. Okay. All right. Uh, yeah, we got. Listen. We got. We got one XP this time, didn't we? Yeah. yeah. Correct. Um, our, just making sure. This is going to be December fifth, December nineteenth, and then January second. Yeah. Sounds good. Uh, I mean, if if Labiana wants to uh, learn a new pet and also wants to learn flesh crafting, I can always teach you Road of Metamorphosis. And 
I think she wants Road of Bones. I think she really wants uh, Nicodemus's mentor to help. Yeah, she's definitely sort of heading down to heading towards Road of Bones. Mm. I mean, isn't it like you know Cappadocian Road essentially, just like Road uh, of Bones? Road of Bones is... was pioneered by the Cappadocians. That's why they call it that. But uh, really, it's just placing knowledge on a pedestal. Okay. So them and Metamorphosis actually get along pretty well. I think the main disagreement there is uh, over how freely knowledge can be shared. Yeah, I mean, here's the thing. Uh, level uh, level uh, 9 sin for Metamorphosis is offering unsolicited uh, solic knowledge to another. Uh, or or asking another for knowledge so it's pretty uh, metamorphosis is pretty much you learn the knowledge and you get it yourself and yeah you no know. personal experience is king with metamorphosis yeah um, i think that, i think road of bones is actually pretty similar it might be yeah, i'm i'm not sure but it might be um, i don't remember it but i yeah i'm i'm happy um, i finally got the only thing nine um the road of the road of bones you can sh you share information if the person receiving it is worthy of it yeah right sharing uh, knowledge with a worthy recipient i think i i mean uh my road does not have it but i would like Rob. to i i like to play vlad is is you need to be worthy to get information yeah uh I, it's pretty much the reason he is, you know, telling people to come to my haven if you want to learn more, because what he's offering is essentially come to my haven, I will flesh craft the shit out of you. Well, all right, guys, thanks for joining us again for session 80. Um, looks like game's going to start going in a slightly different direction. Uh, they're going to be teaming up with a guy who has an appreciation for the arts and culture, and uh, I'm excited to see where that takes us. I hope you guys are excited with us. Uh, looking forward to the next session. Thank you. Have a great evening.